Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Shiro Cooks. I'm your groovy ranch hand, Calder Ness. This episode, we're going to be talking about the watch list tournament Simi and I went to this weekend, listener questions, and ooh, sneaky other little segments. And we'll have to we'll have to see what those are. This is episode 420. Nice. Be howdy. Let's get rowdy. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like the hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Oh, how many six yeah. people yeah. think I am funny? It's a hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which absolute fools. It's not witcher nonsense. I'm gonna make hero clicks like that forever. Are you kidding me? <laughs> hey, Google, back some more. Let's attack Jimmy because he's a jerk. Wow, wow, wow. Eyelash for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Join make always in the studio, Simeon Bruce. What's going on, Simeon? Oh, you know. Just uh, finished mowing my grass today. Oh, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> it's something you got to do in the summer. <laughs> Uh, what was your uh, music of choice? Uh, some Willie Nelson, maybe, to uh, make the time go by. Yeah, when you're yeah. Mowing grass. I like those outlaws, yeah. Yeah, sounds that sounds about right. What uh, made you happy this week, man? Also had uh, Buffalo Soldier on repeat for no reason in particular. Uh, it's just a real catchy tune. Yeah, good old Robert Marley. Um, what made me happy this week? Uh, you know, it was. I wanted to like make something up. I was trying to have something, something that made me happy. Uh, but really, like going to Lincoln to uh, a tournament that we will talk about later. It was actually really fun. It was probably one of like the most fun venues that I've been to in a, a hot minute for a tournament. And yeah, that like, made me pretty happy. Uh, we had Culvers along the way, which was a okay in. It was, it was certain ways. Solid. It was the um was a little food. bit more chocolate syrup there in their milkshake, but uh <laughs> as that it was the only right. person that substitutes a soft drink for a uh liquefied shake drink. That was a very wet shake, I will say. Oh my gosh, was, it was soupy. I know it's hot I out, but that it was, was custard, yeah. but man. Um let's see, what else made me happy? Um not much else. That was that was the highlight. Uh, I can't really remember the work week from last week, but I don't recall any of it being nice or good. Um, yeah, so I will well, stick with that. Hang, Simeon. That's a little bit of a uh, rumor. Hopefully, you don't remember anything too bad. I guess. Yeah. Um, but it's almost like ouch, there's a uh, a haze of some sort of color over my oh, brain. I'm sure. Like a purplish, maybe. Because that's the Always. color of audacity. Oh, right. Of course. Is it, is it though? Full purple, bluish. It's something. Um, I don't know. <laughs> purple and gray? Always. Oh, gosh. Um, See, I, I hear that, and I just think of uh, the bang flavor called purple haze. Oh. With their purple grape flavor. See, I just um, think about my failed uh, pitch to... The Frito Lay Company, that was uh, beet flavored Lays, and they came out purple, so they would have been purple Lays. Gosh, beet flavor! That's disgusting. I can't beet, I can't think of like a worse pickled beet flavored Lays? Flavor, delicious. It helps it a little bit. And the heavy purple dyeing was so that your tongue would turn purple, and uh, also your insides. Oh, I bet it did. Bet is it is it kind of like that liquid that they use? You like drink or whatever, so you can check out your insides. <laughs> yeah, it did, actually, well, chips yeah, instead. So Frito Lay's didn't pick up the idea, but uh, medicine did because they could right. scan you with like an MRI later and be like, "Ah, that's what's in his veins." Purple Lay's it's all over his uh, brain. Beautiful. <laughs> um, what made me happy last week? I alluded to finally unlocking Lord Arthur. Haven't gotten him to level twenty-five yet. He's currently sitting at level twenty-four. But I had my first win as Demon in Evil Dead, the game. I've been sort of playing the Demon player when I just can't find a game as Survivor. 
but I will say these last few games I've played as Survivor have really sucked. Demon players finding us like right away, just getting dunked on, is a huge bummer. Although, quick shout out uh, to something that did make me super duper happy. This it's non Evil Dead related, it's, uh, and I should send me in this video, but it's this uh, this girl recapping uh, church plays uh, in Canada. <laughs> Uh, and these plays are hilariously bad. Now that Luke's back campy. from the dead. I can share it with him. Ooh, yeah, so it'll be it's right. It'll be poignant and uh, what's the, the word? all Canadian church plays? It'll are, make are, yeah. It'll, it'll make sense. Uh, the in jokes and all the Canadian in jokes. Yeah, um, but they're hilarious. Um, obviously, each of the an Easter play, so they all are about like the death and resurrection of Christ, but um, they do it where it's like the main character will be Batman or Jack Sparrow or uh, Iron Man, and it's like, oh, or so you can kind McFly. of a Marty McFly, <laughs> or you can just sort of what um, Buzz Sun, Lightyear, the Sundance Kid, oh, Not yeah, even Sundance Butch Cassidy, Kid. the Sundance oh. Kid. Uh, it, the weird remember, choice. In, in in the show, he was Butch Chastity. Oh, right? that's right, He's, Butch Chastity. Yeah. Make sure to it's, emphasize that because they thought it was very clever. Yeah, um, one of their five good like jokes. Uh, but it's I might link the video in the podcast show notes. But she just goes over them all. It's not like the full plays or anything. Although I want to go like watch them, find them online. The premise is hilarious. Um, I bet they are just terribly laughably bad. But, uh, it is. It is quite funny. It is. Uh, hilarious to me uh, to watch it and i like forced you to watch it i forced my sister to watch it uh it's pretty it was pretty good anyways i do think yeah. that we need to we need to make sure we link the video in the show notes because uh it only has a 1.1 million views yeah so they definitely need that dial h bump definitely need the dial h bump guys to get them that extra <laughs> hundred it wouldn't Indeed. even show up at this point. It'd be no, it wouldn't. One point one. That means a hundred thousand is the lowest number. So, like, until YouTube opens up the uh, second decimal place, you won't be able to notice the dial H bump on those videos. And that's a little, it's a little depressing. Anyways, unless, in and or in less and or more depressing news, we have the watch list. I just want to get in the watch this really quickly before we do our tournament reports. And we'll spend probably more time on our tournament report. Um, but the watch list is, it is important uh, for those of you guys that are playing every single week or playing competitively or looking to see if these figures are going to be worth less, worth more, all sorts of stuff in the future. Uh, again, being on the watch list doesn't guarantee that it'll get an errata or a clarification. Yeah. It just means they are going to watch it for a time. Um so Here's on the watch list. I'll start from the bottom going to the top because that's the spicier, uh, the hotter way to do it. Uh, add a little smoke. Yeah, start uh, from the to bottom. It. Now we're here. Yeah, we're here. Uh, so House of X 051 Maggot is on the watch list. Um, Avengers Empire 52 Wolverine. So that's the uh, Mark token Wolverine is on the watch list. The Alchemical Potion and Alchemical Fire are both on the watch list, respectively. Molecule Man from Fufo is on the watch list. Blackheart from Rise and Fall. And uh, Sky Tyrant from Wonder Woman 80. And of course, the LE Thanos Legacy card um, for the Infinity Challenge Thanos from the Fantastic Four OP kit is on the watch list. So, Simeon, starting from the bottom, what potential changes and or do you think a character needs a change? Do you think what a so, change could be for them or are they fine like let's start with maggot yeah go from there i personally wow. think maggot is fine i think for 40 points he's five clicks long um yes he's mostly like a alpha drop off whatever kind of thing uh with the eeny and meanie bystanders so i think he's fine i, I will say on the top i'm gonna say that about all of these i per personally don't think that any of these actually need a hard fix as far as like they're too competitive now there might be like something where there's like a game mechanic that like kind of makes them broken but like on paper like just like putting this character on the board um nothing broken nothing bad with maggot um right. probably the second best animal generator after red ghost and that's just like a hard fact yeah. The fact that yeah. uh, no one runs Red Ghost is because they're all bad players. Yeah, that's um, a shame. 
but you know that is that just is what it is. Uh, no, so on to what kind of change I do think they might do, and this is just something that I always bothered me about this guy is that he has three different traits that give him free actions. So uh, free generate any or meany bystander unless maggot's bystander of that name has been KO'd. Each has max one. And then he has free, remove an adjacent Eni or Meanie bystander from the map. If you do, remove all of that bystander's food tokens and give them to Maggot. And then free, remove a food token and choose one. Heal two clicks, or this turn Maggot can use charge and modifies his combat values plus one. Um, No other bystander generator has... Or, like, this isn't really a bystander. uh, It is a bystander generator. Um, But what this is more similar to is, like, Lobo, where he drops off the dog pog... Right. And none of the other characters can drop it off and then place it back on them in like the same turn, like remove it from the map. And yeah. the ability to do that means that I can. It's one of those things that like circumvents uh, clause of retaliation um, and right. also just. It's like the big thing. Yeah, there's no way to guarantee that you can kill these ever. Like yeah. if your opponent's playing well, you probably never even get a swing on Eni or Meanie. So that's my I, uh... biggest issue with it. I don't think yeah. it's big enough to nerf him like that, but yeah, if they combined those traits into like a fourth trait that was like free once per Gosh. turn, choose one of these traits, and then I don't there think he go. ever sees play again. So I yeah, see here's the thing, it's always tough to try to find an Inerata that is like, okay, they're a little bit more balanced. But the reason people are, are playing these figures isn't because they're balanced. They're playing them right. because they're ridiculously good. So yeah. that's why Inerata is typically seen points. as yeah, so it's typically seen as whatever a um, a silver bullet. Like, all right, well, that's done. It got executed. No longer can play figure. It's no longer broken. Um, I think for Maggot, a simple change would be it's a power action to suck up Eni or Meanie, um, instead of a free action. I think if we just make that one a power, the rest can be free. Whatever. Um, but I think if we just make that one a power, it's not crippling to him. Number one, because there's barely any colossal retaliation made right. anymore, Going especially forward. after July first. I don't think that's bad. It just means it's not as annoying and probably should have been that way in the first place because most people are a power to drop off the pog. Nowadays it is free, um, but typically it was like a power to drop off a pog and ones that you could put back on you. It was another power action, i.e. like Falcon, uh, Colonel Stars and Stripes, Squirrel Girl, stuff like I mean, that. The so. normal Ultron from, uh, what is it, Empire? For the sure, yeah. Ultron is is still a power action unless he's been power damaged. Action then it's free. Yeah. So they could do so that. Yeah, I think power action the power unless action. he's been damaged, you know? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think, uh, yeah, the power action unless he's been damaged to make them, I think that would really hurt him more. But I think just the power action to suck him back up, I think that'd be solid. A uh, solid change. Arc Wolverine Simeon, the Wolverine from Empire. Yeah. This is the one. We think in here. It's weird. He's a weird guy. This is the only one where I'm like, yeah, they probably didn't really plan on uh, the whole X-Men swap thing, doing what it does to this guy, and that's that's why he needs a change more so than the other ones, in my opinion. Right. Um, so it's specifically that he has, at the beginning of the game, choose an opposing character as Wolverine's mark. Whenever that character moves after resolutions, you may move Wolverine up to two squares. That's too broken. No, not that part. Uh, if Wolverine's <laughs> mark is KO, choose Thanks. a different opposing character to be a new mark. And then he has two other traits. He has uh, he can't be targeted until he has made an attack this game or is adjacent to his mark. And then he has when Wolverine hits after resolutions, he may use reg- regeneration as free. So it's more so that like can't be targeted until he's made an attack this game or is adjacent to his mark um with swap being able to like play some i can't remember exactly how it works but play some yeah, mark something weird and essentially not have to worry about uh ever being targeted like it's it works with x-men swap i don't think there is a spy or shield swap but it's a very specific interaction with that and that's something that can just be retroactively fixed pretty easily it's not really like a a change to the character because on paper i think it would be a clarification on how right. it works it's probably yeah. what he would receive yeah clarification would be better than like an errata um or yeah. just like a ruling like a win ruling uh would be better 
but uh, you know, spirit of the game, like let's break this figure. So for 50 points, he's a charge blades exploit piece. He's not breaking the game by any means, just on his own. With just his dial, uh, he's a solid 50 point piece, but it's more so people are thinking about playing him or are playing him because of that potential to swap. And even then, I don't know, like is a 50 point piece with a 12 for three charge blades he's got four square reach with two targets um can't be targeted until he's made an attack or is adjacent to his mark and like assuming that he just never can be adjacent to his mark or i mean he's gonna eventually make an attack that game right, right? No, it's not don't. like a, i mean unless he rolls like a six on blades it's not gonna like really swing the game this it's is essentially like a you. WWE figure that you can't close attack until it attacks you first or something. Um, I don't know if that's broken for 50 points, to be honest. Like, with his his dial's not bad. Out, I'm not going to lie. It's as far as maybe Silver Age goes, where it's like a 50-point person that can always call stuff in. That can never yeah, be attacked. that's true. That might be, yeah, that's you know, a little, like, worse than an actual modern. That's why I just need clarification more so than, like, overhaul or errata or anything but yeah like that's really the only big problem with him is that he's just funky that's like it yeah i don't even know i haven't even seen many people play this guy no, no not that i, I have haven't noticed like i own one and i still oh. haven't played it i own one too i haven't played it either <laughs> i feel a little bad because he's just kind of cool yeah he is cool um, just working the way he's supposed to um yeah. without like x-men swap shenanigans but yeah uh, all right so next up Alchemical fire, alchemical potion. I don't know why they put the potion on here necessarily. Because it's, um, I don't know, because it's the, uh, the sister the other potion. Sister object. It's the, yeah, it's the, it's, like the, you know. the fire's biggest thing is that you can start it on the penetrating and you never actually have to turn it off of any, at least that's how it's played. Or, you know, the either on the full penetrating damage all the time or on the, uh, leaving the fire marker on all the time is like typically I've seen the most and it seems like to me all you have to do is make it once per turn you have to just roll to see where it goes you know you can't just leave it on one of those yeah. all the time I think that's fire and there's only four sections yeah you can loop yourself back around to it it's not terrible well and you know, so. I mean the way it works roll a d6 choose either clockwise or counterclockwise um, half the result so depending on like what you place it on first like a 1 2 or 3 like you're going to end up on something pretty decent most of the time like the alchemical fire i think is definitely like the better of the two uh just cuz it's either pen oh, damage sure, yeah. it's hit characters modify attack minus 2 which is like easier to overcome in most situations or like after resolutions you can deal one damage to each character adjacent to a hit target but then it, the biggest one is definitely the uh what it's been played the most on is give a hit character a fire token at the beginning of the, each turn, deal that character one penetrating damage, remove a fire token when that character clears action tokens. With uh, clearing only being, clearing is only when you actually physically take both to or not both tokens, but when you actually clear at the end of your turn. It's not end from leadership, turn. it's not from willpower, it's none of that stuff. So clearing only activates from the actual clear phase you have to have a token on at the end of your turn and not have made it like not have put the token on at the beginning of your turn uh, not that it's like impossible to clear nowadays i still do it every single time i play so it's never been an issue for me but there are figures that have like really good leaderships really good willpowers hey. um, party thor would probably never normal clear in most in most games um, yeah, depending on luck, but yeah. So, like, that's the one where it's like, you know, if if you attach the flame marker, right? Oh, no, fire token, sorry, not flame marker. If you attach the fire token via a free attack, let's say through, I don't know, eight squares of blocking terrain because you play bad figures, um, then, yeah, like, alchemical fire can be pretty devastating. On a normal right. game, it's just another object that does a cool effect. It's like I think it's yeah. literally just the use with Thanos that makes this good. Uh, not I shouldn't say good. This is literally just the use with Thanos that makes this broken because Thanos can mind sure. control, make an attack with mind control, 
and then after ever, after resolutions attach the fire marker and then that character has to take an action and possibly clear or like so it's it's possibly right. two turns annoying. possibly one turn but either way it's at the beginning of their turn so they're going to take at least one pen damage it's just yeah it's just good um alchemical potion i don't know if we even need to go into it because it's not going to get changed to. i i really don't yeah it's, yeah it's uh it's a list of powers what like 12 different powers ranging from it's a pretty big circle you yeah know? so it's, it's it's fairly inconsistent a lot harder to get yeah a specific thing yeah. it's not as consistent as the po or as the alchemical fire, fire. so the potion is cool no, i've played it a few times too much about it. but yeah it's not gonna get changed in my opinion um unless it just they fix like a wording about how rolling the d6 or something or like like oh, you maybe. said if it's like you have to do yeah. it every turn like they changed uh haha -ha joker to like you it wasn't a may anymore you had to like roll the d6 yeah, every turn or feel them. um if they did that to one they definitely just change it and do it to both which is fine all right so let's go ahead uh, who is it Malky man Malky. Okay, so like i think we all know Malky man's on here yeah. does the smoke cloud for free and then he rolls a d6 he can turn into anything I think the simple change here, and I don't think many people could disagree with it, is you just half the D6 roll. So instead of being 10 pieces of barrier on the map now, yeah, max is 7. You know? like, I think that's better. It's not worse. Or you know, and just like hindering water and not blocking. Like, true. Yeah. You're blocking out of it. So you yeah, can only you turn can have into a mixture of smoke, water. hindering, I mean, and water. Yeah. And then or you, you have want, to say there, yeah. there must be at least one of each. You know, yeah, like because I mean, you can't just have it be just putting smoke into water, smoke on the water, but, but uh, like if still get blocking in there, it's like roll a d6, maybe don't have it, and then say you must choose uh, an equal number of each, roughly. I mean, there's, there's odd numbers, so maybe that wouldn't work out super well, but I love like water blocking and hindering, yeah, you know, something like that, something a little bit goofier, not as yeah. reliable as just like, all right, wall, biggest okay, issue, wall. yeah, with this guy is like Calder said. The potential for 10 squares of blocking for 30 points is just very disruptive. Um, others will argue that, like, you know, it's necessary to defend against certain teams. I played it in a tournament. I played Molecule Man to, like, for that very reason, because, like, I just wanted a ton of blocking because I wasn't playing theme and I knew I wasn't going first most of the time. Uh, it worked a few times. I will say, like, <laughs> when I needed it most, I definitely rolled, like, a 1 and so I had to like power action barrier anyhow, but That's uh, how it feels. yeah, like it. You know, other than that, he's got cosmic energy, so he has the potential. Like it's not even close to a guarantee. It's not even a fifty-fifty, but he does have the potential to do it like back to back. And I think the right. biggest thing for me is that his smoke cloud is free, and then his free roll a d six. Maybe if those were combined into like once per well, that wouldn't work once per turn. Yeah, um, but if the biggest thing for me is that you can carry him up and then smoke cloud and place barrier all for free. He is the highest amount of possible barrier uh, that you can do after like carrying a team or moving right. up, not taking like a power action. In the you know that part like, just... is also used for on the reverse end of things to get rid of a lot of an opponent. That's barrier. true. Yeah, you Molecule know, Man has always been the best something. combat or. <laughs> The best counter to Molecule Man has always been himself. Right. <laughs> no, exactly. Oh, you know, in a way, it's like, well, if everybody's playing him, then it's like, okay, nothing happening here. Like a, a roll. I think uh, I think a solid change is used half the how much barrier, and that doesn't totally. I don't think that I don't think that kills him. I don't think it's like, oh well, never gonna play him again. As if they were to like say make it a power action to roll the d6 to change all that stuff, right? That would probably kill him. I think uh, yeah. if it just said you just have to they, roll, I like the thing I like about fine. the change you said is they literally just have to change one word, replace those markers with instead of any, place those markers yeah. with a combination of hindering water and or blocking terrain markers. Yeah, that too is is solid. Like you know, I, sure you might be able to put solid. four blocking down, but you can't put six down. And if you roll worse, then you know you right. might be able to put one blocking, but. If you roll like a three, it's got to be hindering water and blocking. So you get one blocking until you roll a six. And then you, yeah, that's the only go. time you get 
Well, I guess you'd get four still. Blocking. But, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, uh, but yeah. Uh, that's Molecule Man. Next up, we have Blackheart. Blackheart has some fun stuff. He's got some traits. Um, so it's leadership. Blackheart uses it to generate a 006 Hellfire Club guard on click one. And then he has power, turn all of them uh, to click nine, all the friendly Hellfire Club guards. Second trait, which I think is probably what would get in Errata. Uh, if a character has been KO'd since your last turn, Blackheart deals penetrating damage. And then free, once per turn, for all characters of this trait, KO friendly uh, Hellfire Club guard. If you did, remove all action tokens from Blackheart, heal him one click. And after resolutions, you can use either charge or running shot as free. I think this is probably the biggest so thing, gross. and I say we just we just make it a power action. Power, KO a guard, and then you still get a free running shot or charge sure. and heal a click. Again, I think a lot of things on this list are just free actions, giving many figures too but many free actions. It's power, kill a Hellfire, Hellfire Club guard. Remove the heal action token one. you just gave him. Heal exactly, one. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, yeah it'd like, be like a wash, but not, yeah, you still wouldn't be able to wash. Do it's, double well, attack. it's better than free and then also get an attack. Or I think if he's on charge, a lot of the times, it feels like it happens when you finally hit him to that first stop click. So then it's a charge flurry. So, yeah, he heals up right. to flurry. Um, or, I mean, even in the second stop click, he heals up to right. flurry. So yeah, yeah, exactly. So... I think that'd be a, yeah. a straight up fine change. A lot of people are saying there's no issue with Blackheart because the uh, what's it called Terror Reign of Terror map Reign is going to be going. Gone. Yeah, I disagree. I still think this I could think be a power always action. Be leadership I, shenanigans. Yeah, absolutely, there will always be like uh, not necessarily like re rolls, but um, I mean, there's like tarot cards and stuff. Like, I don't know if we've seen one that specifically interacts with leadership, but I think we have. Um, we definitely see oh, this stuff that can re-roll be. like D6 a rolls, D6, which would include right, this. Exactly. So it's not yeah. like Reign of Terror is completely gone. You could definitely play it in some capacity because of those kind of things. Um, I'll say for 75 points, Blackheart's always felt kind of squishy to me. I get he's double, uh, double stop click with Mastermind and Mystics and yada yada. But like, I quite literally took this guy out with an Asuka for 40 points. Like, Asuka hit him to a stop click, took a Mystics, next turn, Poison and Submission Hold. And he was just dead. Like, there was nothing right. that he could do to get, like, away from that. Just, you know. Um, not saying that that's, you like, the, the perfect it's counter. Poison but, uh, is a problem, like, obviously. Yeah, like, he, he can definitely be easily taken out on the stop clicks. And it's not, those aren't the problem. I think the big problem is, yeah, if he gets a Hellfire Club guard... It's anywhere on the map that he can KO one. So KO maybe it. if it's like an adjacent oh, he, Hellfire Club guard. And another big thing is that he gets a Hellfire Club guard for free each time those that clicks review. No, or not each time, the first time or whatever, right? So yeah. he's going to get two free Hellfire Club guards, uh, try to knock him down. And if you're just continually making attacks and not poisoning or anything like that, then mastermind to the guards. So yeah, that's it true. does make him really annoying. He generates derivative. next to him, so like... Yeah. And he's got flight, so he's almost always going to be carrying one if he's got one. I don't I, know. I, I, I will know. say... I guess he, I do like your fix, if they would fix him at all. But he's yeah. one of those characters that I... Like, f technically just four clicks deep. Like, against Chase Beast. Uh, and I'm not saying that like that's how we have to look at things. But there's been... In Silver, there's probably I, like I hate five saying characters. something like that. Because it reminds me of this dark time where we would say... Well, I just call in... Yeah, and pen arrow. blast him for six. Call you know, green like, arrow. Oh, call in Cyclops. I pen blast him for six, and now yeah. what? Like you can't look at every character uh, like that, which people did for a really long time, and I was one of those people for a time. Yeah, uh, for a long time, but for a little bit, I was like, well, I just call him Cyclops. I pen blast you for six, and it was a done deal. Um, gosh, that's years removed from that. I don't even know why I'm saying Collins, <laughs> but whatever. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, four yeah. years back. That's, uh, that's Blackheart. Fun, what a fun time. Next up is Sky Tyrant. Uh, I don't know, it's weird because, like, obviously, he's really, really good. Um, I will say, I know I said Black Hearts should probably still get changed, even if something that made him really good was retiring. I don't think it made him that much better. It added a, a plus one to a leadership role. 50 it was just like always third. worth playing if you're playing Isn't crazy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so like, that's how I feel about Sky Tyrant, though, is like now that Power Gem power is gem's gone, gone, yeah, it's just an 11 for three. He's, well, he's probably going to be a 12 for 3 most of the yeah, time, well, but not um, always. Yeah, he's got decent keywords. And, you know, obviously, they're still perplex. There's no there's no easy way to buff his damage anymore. 
no plus two easy damage for Sky Tyrant. Let's say, okay, he can carry a Moloid. So yeah. he can be 12 for four. Even then, defenses are so high. Crazy high. It's usually never played on theme. So if it was, I think Latveria was probably his most popular theme. And I this is me Sky having Tyrant? not played. Right? Was it not? It was a monster, right? Like, I've always seen and, him on monster teams. Well, I played him on Latveria and I won, so... <laughs> Okay, maybe okay. maybe probably more so monster. I forgot he had monster, to be honest with you. Um yeah, I guess so. If he's if he played on theme, he's got like a max of two props. I don't know. I played Sky Tyrant a lot. I really have. I've played him I mean he three or four he's major one of those figures that works isn't a ton but... so much on theme or off theme because he's just yeah. a fifty point I'm probably like especially with power gem mm-hmm. or uh like some perplex or whatever, he's just gonna work Going forward, I think uh, like Billy Maximoff, the forty-five point, you perplex up his okay. attack to a twelve. Yeah. Um, you might not have a prob on it, but like neither can your opponent. So, now that's that's pretty solid. Um, I will say only because I have charged up a Sky Tyrant many times to have my opponent prob the hell out of me, and yeah, is it all? And he can't charge back. Dies, yeah, yeah. Like I've played against animal like that, and it's like you're like, all right, if I don't hit, I don't hit. I mean, it really sucks, you know. So there's, there's just like a lot of stuff about him. It's it's weird. I think uh, those that don't know, as furry charge, don't have his speed. He hits after resolutions. He may move up to half his speed value using movement character. So if he hits twice, he gets to move twice. So he can move twelve squares back, eleven squares up the first time to charge flurry. You know? He flies, he ignores a lot of stuff with flight. Second trait is that whenever he KOs an opposing character, you give him a reincarnation token. When he would be KO'd, he remains. Blood. Racking up all that blood. Um, So when he would be KO'd, he instead just turn him to his last click. Um, Then his first trait. He just it's outwit. Everybody forgets about his first trait. The um, secret six shirt. Then if trait, he has yeah. the six people, they, they can outwit people that have protected or safeguard outwit. Um, it would be hilarious if their change was he does not outwit anymore. They would never make that change because that ruins <laughs> yeah, the they th- just thing ruin all the secret six people. But, but like they uh, they take away the one thing no one ever used on them would be hilarious. Like technically it's an entire trait. They got rid of an entire trait, <laughs> but it's like uh, um, I really don't know if he gets changed. I think it's like a vulture thing. He's one of the it's hardest like ones to put to him on there so far, in my opinion. I just don't know. I don't know what to change about him. Because yeah, you can't take away it, like when he KOs an opposing character, give him a reincarnation token. You can't take that away because that just changes the, that whole trait. The whole trait. No. Uh, when he would be KO'd, you can instead remove a reincarnation token. So it's like, what would you make that like KOs I mean, two opposing character? Like, how would you change uh, that? And then yes. his special speed. Uh, flurry charge, but do not yeah. have speed. Like, if you change it to just normal charge, charge. again, oh. well, one, like, we're on monster him. theme, you're not changing him too much, because there's then a yeah. Magneto that'll get played with yeah. him, I oh, guess. Oh, true. I mean, maybe not. Yes. I don't know. Maybe that's I enough to just change the him change completely. The change thing is, like, get rid of his improved movement characters. So he, he can't can do get away as easy. Move, get away as easy. Make it a breakaway roll. Yeah, I that's guess. the one thing that would not maybe be a huge change yeah um it's not as easy to think of ones for him i think he already takes a big hit losing power gem yeah oh so, if they did charge but do not have speed when he uses charge in this or if it was like charge period charge but do not have speed when he uses charge in this way he cannot use flurry something like that so you can use flurry with a normal that. charge but Weird. not with like that would be a lot of text yeah, that's just. I'm just trying to think of like, how's how could I change him without like changing him so drastically that he's just like a completely different figure. Um, Personally, um, I don't like Sky ahead. Tyrant. I hate getting Sky Tyranted, but I agree that like without Power Gem, without a ton of boost to damage and attack and stuff, because he was just always a natural. Well, not a natural, but equipped. He was always a twelve for five with flurry right. and so that was yeah. just always bad and then sometimes he was a 13 because he shared a keyword so that was really yeah. bad but i don't think he's too bad after that rotates fair enough fair enough all right so thanos here he, he does a lot of stuff i'll i'll read through the old trait here so let's oh, see his, his i've got normal... some opinions on this one 
Oh boy, you got some opinions? Well, make make a meme or two. Then maybe yeah. I'll listen to your opinion. How's that sound? Uh, so his second trait, which is a little bit easier, gives him power, or sorry, cosmic energy, and then he can reduce penetrating damage. He's got like invul and toughness, and then yeah. cosmic energy just gives him protected outwit and willpower. So nothing crazy. When, when his crazy dial stuff. is nothing but reducers, and the reducers are invul and toughness, it makes sense yeah. to give him it, cosmic yeah. energy and really reduce penetrating. can't. Pen. Eat on that that much for 175 points. Yeah, I'm gonna want someone that reduces penetrating damage if all they have is invulnerability. Like that's that's fine. 11 clicks of life sucks, but uh, that's like fine. Yeah, he's um, almost the problem. Two thirds your build, so yeah, I think that's all super fair. Problem comes into again. I think this ends up being just a free action thing. There's too many dang free actions in this world. Uh, so at the beginning of the turn, you roll a d6. And you choose a number of infinity gems equal to half the result on the list below. So max he can get is three, but let's just read what these all are. So infinity gem number one is power. Give him close combat expert and range combat expert. Time gives him prop control and super senses. Reality gives him barrier smoke cloud. He may use both as free, but only to generate one marker. Pull is steel energy, both close range combat attacks and regen as free. Client is improved targeting, ignores hindering terrain, ignores elevated terrain, ignores blocking terrain, ignores characters, and can shoot uh, while based. Oh, boy. One of my control as free. Like the other. Yeah. Uh, my control is free. And then... It's like sidestep, but three squares, or a power that just deletes an opposing character <laughs> yeah. off the map. Um, Which are you going to choose? <laughs> Uh, in space is phasing teleport is free, but only to move up to six squares. And then Thanos can use chosen effects until your next turn. So the biggest thing is is mind. Um, being able to see through everything with a 10 range, two targets. And then it also gives him mind control is free. So I think, very simple. Um, you you move away a lot of the... So the biggest problem is, is mind control, right? I would say maybe he can only do this if he mind controls. Yeah. Versus he can also make an attack, you just, with, right? Yeah. You just like the uh, simple one. make it improve targeting, like all that improved targeting, but only when he uses mind control. Still only extremely good. Yeah, it's like stupid good. I mean, we've seen like the broadcast tournament results with this Thanos being changed like that. Still wins. Like still manages yep. to win with that errata because it's still a really strong, powerful thing. Like being able to mind control with a 13 attack from 10 squares or more away. Pretty good. Yep. But yeah. That's that's not a bad option. That's that's like the one change that comes to mind. I know people are running tournaments with a errata. I don't remember what it was. I didn't play in any of those. So we'll say the space sucks. Um, running away, encouraging running away is always a bummer. Yeah. I wish this would be technically encouraging him to move up, but it just doesn't. He's got 10 range. Uh, people usually drop him off. He does the mind controls free. Um, again, I think could also just do that he can't use my controls free but then he gets all that stuff and then only to use my control i'm also super okay with that where he can't make a range combat attack he doesn't get my control for free but it's my control and he gets all that other stuff is still in my opinion good um yeah also get rid of the regen as free i just he takes a ton of free actions like let's say he rolls yeah three of these and he chooses these you know he chooses cool, soul mind and space almost it's, all it's, of them activate in some capacity as free right it's, it's really dumb. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it really sucks. So it's like he can move six bases for free. He can then mind control you, and then he can also then shoot you, and then he can regen for free if you hit him. Now it's like, oh, cool. That's what you get on a good roll, which, you know, maybe there's an argument to be made that it feels like Thanos. Thanos is just dogging you. Like, yeah, it's, it's cool. This is a super powerful Thanos. It's funny. It's like the first Thanos. Um, how neat is that? That's pretty neat. It's, um... It sucks to play against. I think everybody can agree it sucks to play against. And there's a lot of things online. You can be like, oh, well, just get good. Because Thanos isn't actually... And it's like, <laughs> all right, don't be a killjoy. Don't be a jerk. Like, the dude sucks to play against. So let me let me I wallow in Yeah, here. I think it's just the... It comes down to, like, it's one of those figures that can outplay you without actually being like the like the person playing it being any good at right. the game. Like, they can just... Yeah. And that's not like a shot at anyone that Agreed. plays this figure, but... This is a plug and play figure, just as much as Unimind. Like Unimind picking stealth, sitting and hindering with like a plus three to defense was just as plug and play as this guy being able to target me through multiple layers of blocking. 
and like mind control is free and then also 13 for three yep. at me or 14 for four or uh yep. use Honestly, the uh, alchemical uh, even another fire trait that gives him minus two to attack and range lord um <laughs> i'd be okay with that trade as well jeez i mean the dude's got a 13 ah. starting Here's my issue. I've been harping on WizKids for a long time about how these high point figures don't have the stats to match. His defense drops off so quickly, and he does not have anything that boosts his defense. I like the stat values. I really do. I mean, I I won't say that like this figure's perfect by any means, or like I I want him to stay the same. I personally like if it came down to my decision they heard it here first folks simeon thinks thanos is perfect and should stay the same (laughs) if it came down to my vote i would vote do not change thanos um mostly because i think that thanos is dead in the water with tarot cards and i think thanos is only played competitively so in a situation where you're only playing competitively and you're playing with tarot cards because you have to because that's the name of the game when something's a free thing to do I think Thanos just loses most of the time going forward because, like, he already kind of lost to X Men swaps sometimes. He already lost to like uh, Fantastic Four swaps occasionally. Um, currently losing to like Agatha occasionally. You add yeah. in tarot cards, and like every so often, he just can't like pick one of these powers, or if he does, it just does nothing. Speaking mostly about like the mind seeing through everything. Um, yeah, it's pretty bad for him. And like, sure, th- like tarot cards might boost him as well, but I don't think they help him as much as they hurt him, because X Men swap, especially X Men teams in general, just have a ton of attacks, and you get him down a couple clicks to where he's only got like a sixteen or a seventeen. Um, it's real easy to like do some follow up attacks and like knock him even further down, and like at best he's regenning for like three at that point. But I will say. Um, to go along with Calder, if I was going to change something, because this guy, yeah, he is just no fun. He is a fun-sucking piece to play against. Um, if you play him, you are a fun sucker. You suck the fun out of rooms. But <laughs> I will say... I mean, I agree. Uh, I concur. There's too much free stuff going on. You know, on a good roll, you've got three things that you can do for free. You can mind control for free. Uh, you can phase for free, and then you might as well regen, or you might have prob and super senses. Like, why not um, reduce pen damage and have super senses? I don't know. I think one of the biggest problems I have with this guy is the ability to get to him, because you can play, like, uh, Molecule Man, have a ton of barrier. Um, you can have, like, you know, him just, like, phase away. You have to close the gap, and with 10 range that sees through everything, it's really hard to close the gap without him just destroying part of your team first. It's almost impossible. A fix. Uh, A third trait. Uh, It's just called Get Good, and it says Thanos can never win map. Eh? I'm okay with that. Yeah, Thanos just can never win map. Like, he can go first, but he can't pick map. Can't pick map. How often do you play? How often do people play him? If you reality is map? often disappointing or something, I don't know. Be a, that'd be hilarious. Just can't yeah, pick map. Reality is often <laughs> disappointing. Balanced be as all things should be. That's super. Yeah, that's super balanced. I love that. When Thanos, Thanos just can't would pick map. win. When Thanos would what a win loser. map, he just doesn't. Doesn't. But first, <laughs> crap. Okay. Um. It, listener, if you liked our uh, incredible solutions to the watch list uh, to these figures, let us know in the yeah. comment section below. As the uh, number one uh, competitive HeroClix podcast in the entire obviously. universe, we are. our takes was, are like, always the not best even on disputed. these like, That was just a known fact. Yeah, like, who, I didn't who even need to say it. I just either. said it, you know, in case yeah. you, this is your first episode, yeah. you know. Reiterate, you know, and, and <laughs> didn't know. Now you know. Uh, all right, that's the watch list. Um, I've been dying to jump into this because it's also another thing that made this week. Our tournament this weekend uh, was a win map in Lincoln, and E, old Nebraska. So I made the trek down to Omaha, and then I went up Saturday, went down laterally. I have no idea. I've never it's, I uh, Nebraska west. that it's well. West. West. I mean, okay. it, the the road does kind of dip and dive and dodge. Okay. Yeah, it's mostly just west. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. West. Uh, we went down to Lincoln. 
Ah, I still sit down. Whatever. Went to Lincoln. Simeon. Uh, let's go over our teams. Let's go over our matches. But uh, what did you play? Tell us about it and tell us how it blew up in your face. I'm <laughs> sorry. That <was> me. <laughs> well, uh, that was the whole point of the team was to blow up in my true. face. It was the whole point. Uh, I played a hodgepodge of don't die stuff. Um, mostly because I wanted to play Anarchy. Uh, when they first announced... When they first announced Silver, my first thought was Joker's Wild Anarchy. Uh, huge map control, can go through stop clicks, can go through rollouts, can just, you know, kind of delete stuff off the board. Um, and I thought, you know, with the change to pushing damage, that means that Anarchy can just place more bombs more easily. Uh, I can do something to, like, help expedite him with that. And so that's mostly what I wanted to do. He's 75 points. If you don't know what it, he does, he places six bomb special markers, as described on this card, uh, on the map, at least four squares from any starting area and each other. So positioning is pretty important, but they can go quite a variety of places, to be honest. Uh, then he has a special attack power on his first click and his last two clicks, that is power, give or give anarchy a power action, place a place adjacent a bomb special marker, as described on this card. And then the bomb marker which has its own text on the card. So it sticks around even when Anarchy is KO'd because it's its own thing. It's a special little... It's not like a trait or anything. This is like its own little thing. At the beginning of your turn, if an opposing character is within three squares, you may roll a D6 that can't be re-rolled. One through three, decoy. Remove that marker. Four through six, boom. All characters within three squares of this marker are dealt three damage. Destroy all adjacent blocking terrain, then remove the marker. So... This can instantly kill things like the Super Air Flash. Uh, it can take, let's see, Sky Tyrant down to like his last click, I guess. Uh, Black Heart. Like, I'm just thinking things that we've already talked to. Things without big right, reducers yeah, yeah, yeah. get hurt quite a bit. Um, and it's possible to place these like where you could roll for two bombs in a single beginning of turn and have like one character take six potential damage not all in one shot obviously it's gonna be three and then three but still um that was the premise of the team play with anarchy uh things that don't die i went with one of my favorite characters i think i'd mentioned it on the show but i really wanted to do daredevil um with the so this is earth x daredevil on the bike uh with the uh good old what was it? The uh, Ultimate Nullifier. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know Like when I thought of this, but Calder like mentioned it, and I was like, oh, yes. That was yeah. the thing I wanted yeah, to it's play. Awesome. I was yeah. like, that is like... So Ultimate Nullifier is a power action character within six range. Uh, you pick a number between one and six. You say that number out loud, so like three. You roll a d6. If the number that you roll on the die is higher than the number you said, the opposing character takes that much damage, whatever you said it was. Not the die roll, they take like what you said. Uh, so if I say one and then I roll, there's a good chance I'm going to deal the opponent. Actually, it's just straight up going to deal the opponent one damage. Because um, if you equal that number, both characters take that much damage. So if you say one and you roll a one, you both take one damage. Uh, if you say six... There's no way that you're not going to both take six damage if you manage to roll a six. I only... Nope, I never said six during this tournament. Uh, but essentially, Daredevil can't die. He has uh, Pretty awesome. three six tokens, and he only removes those six tokens from his card when an opposing character rolls a six in an attack roll against him. Uh, he has three to start with, and he removes one each time. It says, if Daredevil has a six token when he would be KO'd, instead choose a starting line different from the one you most recently chose and turn him to that click. Protected Pulse Wave. I'd never gotten so lucky with the six tokens because I pulled this guy in an Earth X pre release and somebody straight up flurried me, rolled a six in the first attack, so I removed one, and then crit hit me in the second attack. And so he just straight up died Ooh. in one Bad. flurry. It's kind um, of the luck with it, right? And yeah. <laughs> Some, like, when it works well, it works really well. Uh, but, yeah, so there was Daredevil always equipped with the, um, gosh, I forgot about it again, uh, the ultimate nullifier, the nullifier of the ultimates. Uh, of course, that's from Future Foundation. That's uh, Reed Richards' 
or no? Is that from Future Foundation? Watcher. Yeah, Future Foundation. Yeah, Future it comes Foundation. with the Watcher. The well, watcher it, it comes with the Watcher, it. but yeah, it's yeah. it's the thing that uh, Reed Richards always uses, like a pop gun to like threaten somebody. He never. I don't think he ever used it in comics, but. It does something really impressive. Not have you the do kahuna use to pull the trigger. Yeah. Um, then I used Haha ha Joker at 40 points. That's, like, if you don't know what he does, he's number 060, I believe, from Joker's Wild. Yeah, 060 from Joker's Wild can be played at 30, 40, or 50 points. Um, he starts with, for, like, whatever point value you play him at, he either gets 3, 4, or 5 uh, what are they? Escape tokens, respectively. So at thirty he has three, at fifty he has five, etc. Um, he has a blue line and a red line on his dial, and then his dial just never has a KO. So he just rolls over those lines every time you roll past one of those lines from taking damage or potentially healing him. Uh, you remove one of those tokens. So your opponent scores ten points for each token that he removes, or he's KO'd if you have no more of those. Um, but yeah, he's just a fun character. He's been errated once before, and uh, every turn you have to roll for him to see if you heal him or damage him. So you can kind of control like where he's at, but also if I damage him for three, like let's say he's on click one, I don't have the option to heal him unless I just want to remove one of those tokens right away. So I'm going to damage him. So if I roll like a six and I damage him three, and then a bomb goes off. He just, like, moves past one of those lines right away, which is kind of sad. But uh, played him at 40. He wasn't equipped with anything. He's not a standard character, I don't believe. So, uh, let's see. Can't be chosen for Mastermind. I, I think he's not a standard character, but I don't remember. Either way, I wasn't equipping him. I also played the starter set Uatu, the Watcher, from Disney+, Plus because he can be put back on click one however many times you'd like um, as long as you well not however many times you like so you can essentially take uh, five clicks of damage and then also at the beginning of your as much turn as you just like. go back to click one for him Don't or whatever. KO click turn him to the click one click that's, yeah that's <laughs> just, just as many times as I want to uh, something happen. more interesting than that for him was that lines of fire were never blocked uh, so he has TK on four out of his six clicks, so I could move Anarchy around pretty much wherever I wanted. As long as Anarchy could see where it was going, the Watcher could also see. So being able to TK Anarchy around so that Anarchy could place a bomb was pretty big. Um, I then also had Magneto, the 2x2 two two from XDPS. Uh, he was at, of course, like his 25-point line, giving, giving me uh, leadership and another TK, another free place, that kind of thing. The whole like go goal was to like yo-yo anarchy around, which I managed to do a few times. Um, yo-yo anarchy around and kind of place bombs, pull them back so that he couldn't get KO'd. Because anarchy is really, anarchy and Magneto so far are like the only two things that are easy to KO. And by that I mean like you can't just like heal them back up or whatever. Right. They don't just ignore the damage. Um, let's see, Daredevil, Ultimate Nullifier, Anarchy, the Joker, the Watcher. I also put the Cloak of Levitation on the Watcher. Most of the time I put it on the Watcher. That was mostly just to, because he has no speed powers, it gives him an easy breakaway, it gives him some mobility with sidestep, and then it gives him flight, which he doesn't naturally have, even though he's, like, I don't know, kind of a flowy dude. He's not giant. He nice. needs, yeah, he can't fly. So, like, helped him mobility-wise pretty well. Um, and then the last piece of the puzzle was, uh, let's see. All right. Well, two, yeah, two piece, two last yeah. pieces. The last actual figure on the team was Ironheart from ADW, who... For whatever reason, this is the first time I ever ran Ironheart. I've owned one for a long time. Uh, she has the broken armor tokens. Every time she would be... She starts with one. Every time she would be dealt damage, regardless of like attack or whatever, uh, she rolls a d6. If it is equal to or lower than the amount of broken armor tokens she has, uh, she dies. She just is KO'd. If it's higher, then 
she turns to whatever the click result, like whatever the result of the die was, she turns to that click number uh, and gains a broken armor token. There was only one game I played where she got up to three broken armor tokens. Most of the time she died at two. I would get yeah. to two and then she would roll a two. That's uh, rough. Yeah, it was. But for only 25 points, she usually did something. She's got sidestep and outwit top dial with flight. So at the very least, she can carry, she can help equip, yep. that kind of thing. And then my last 20 points was Mudman. Just, oh, yeah. Just a little old Mudman bystander. Uh, he has three life and tokens. The mud. Or no, he starts with two life tokens, but essentially you have to triple tap him while he has life tokens because every time he would be KO'd, instead he removes a life token. So first time he would be KO'd, he removes one. Second time he would be KO'd, he removes the other one. And then third time he would be KO'd, he just is KO'd. And then anytime he KOs something, he gets some back. So Mudman's something I liked playing back when it was um, modern. It's something I like. I actually won the Nebraska State with Mudmen's on my team, on my Avengers squad, because they don't break theme. So it's Avengers yeah. and two Mudmen's. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Mudman's just like a really solid figure and also can't die from bombs. He was usually the first to go, though, I will say, between my own bombs and just like poison or whatever. He was usually the first sure, to go. Yeah. But yeah, that was the team. No IDs, two special objects. Uh, just like a don't die anarchy bomb kind of team. And, you know, we played three games. It was a win a map. There was no cut. There was no map. So uh, how did your games go? Uh, as you know, this venue wasn't a crazy competitive venue. So the games weren't really nuts. But uh, yeah. Let me know how your game's fun, Simeon. My first game, uh, let's see, let me remember quickly. Oh, my first game was against a uh, Double Green Lantern from Wonder Woman 80th. So it was Double Green Lantern, uh, Guy Gardner. So the Green Lanterns were at the higher point value, the 19 Defend. Um, all my games were pretty close. Like, notably, I, I did not score a ton of points. Uh, so it's two Green Lanterns, a Guy Gardner, um, a Dr. Claire Finn dropping the Yafit Pog, a Black Leopard, and the 25 point. Um, what is that set? Uh, Masters of Evil? Avengers? Oh, Masters that Captain America? Evil. Okay. Yeah, 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 25 yeah, point harder. Captain America from yeah. uh, Avengers vs. Masters of Evil. So uh, he got the drop on me, but didn't have any theme team probs. So when his. Uh, Guy Gardner with the 13 attack came up and equaked my my 17s and my 18s. He rolled a three, which was pretty sad. <laughs> it was yeah, the game was pretty much should have ended right there, but uh, because well, I, it wouldn't have ended because half of my stuff would have not died technically, but would have been a rough start to the game for sure. Um, uh, yeah, so like that that first attack was just pretty rough. Uh, we were on the what's that terrible new map from? I think it's from the Fantastic Four, like Death Hole oh, or something. Yeah, one that's got the weird blocking. All the walls. Is it War of the Realms? Right? I feel like no, I played that is from it on... the Fantastic Four. Okay, the Fantastic Four OP kit set. Um Because yeah. one side has the weird elevated open outside part, and then one has like the mazy wall part and i feel bad not knowing the name of map oh, let me oh no let me, let me look it up real quick because let's see the regal no that's not it uh realm of death yeah realm of, realm death. of death there you go yeah so yeah i went on the like the the open part obviously like i needed my tk lines and uh ability to like go and grab objects and move back um i could have done it from the other one it just man like what a what a bad map i hate that map so much uh luckily bombs do destroy some blocking it's just like what they're whatever they're adjacent to um i managed to get a few hits in with uh some bombs um claire finn actually healed black leopard back up with her like minus two to attack is like the the free support he used on black oh leopard. yeah so like black leopard did take like a bunch of damage from one of those but um i'm after guy failed on his attack i knocked him down to his poison click 
he poisoned, which took a life token off of Mudman, and I can't remember who else. Watcher skedaddled with like the with the help of the cloak, sidestepped away with plasticity, and uh, wow. yeah. So like Mudman was the first to die. I can't remember what the actual score came down to, but I know it was a difference of like not a whole lot. It was like 35 to 50, I believe. I believe it was a 15-point difference. Yeah, that I, sounds about right. So, Super close. Yeah, it, he... Well, yeah, let me let me see if it's up on there. WizKids Info Network. Uh, yeah, it was like a very tight game, and it wasn't like we were play, playing slow. It was just my team doesn't deal a whole lot of damage, and it doesn't really matter how much damage you deal to most of my team. I kept Anarchy and uh, Magneto back for the most for most of the game, um, and so it was just the characters that you couldn't really score easily that I played right off the bat. Uh, yeah, it was it was fifty to thirty five. So what thirty five points did he memory. get? Mudman. Oh, he probably 15. rolled Joker once. So that would have been so Mudman rolling Joker once and then. Uh, like an object, like the cloak somehow. No, I don't know how I would how the five. Maybe it was. Oh, this was a match where so Mudman didn't die. This was Ironheart died by rolling a two. Okay. So the oh, second time she took Ironheart damage, and she died. Okay. And then yeah, rolled Joker past one of his clicks. So that was the other ten. Yeah. Sure. So that was the first match. Uh, the second match was against. Richard, uh, <laughs> listener, listener of the show. Um, actually, I think both of these matches were against listeners. So I really, yeah. I really showed him how how good we are. Oh, uh, yeah, but no, he was running a pretty solid X Men swap. It's what I mostly would be running if I was running X Men swap. I don't own Jubilee, but that's you know one of the solid ones. Ended up with uh, let's see the two TK cables. Jubilee, um, Tempo, uh, Madrix, well, like a multiple man, um, a Cypher, the Lockheed Bystander. I know I'm forgetting a few other things, but those are like what I'm most... Oh, a big thing, I guess, would have been uh, the big thing. The Phoenix. The Dark oh, Phoenix. Oh, Phoenix. The big thing. <laughs> yeah, That's the big thing. Oh. Um, I, so this match went to Otherworld Castle because uh, he won map, so... Jubilee transformed into dragon form or whatever. Um, very smartly figured out quite off the bat, like without me even mentioning it, that uh, Magneto and Anarchy are the two easiest things to score. So that was his immediate target. And with TKs and Perplexes, it was just way too easy to hit both of those pretty hard. Got So killed Magneto, got... Uh, I think Dazzler was on the team because I remember him using Shield TA. Uh, killed Magneto and then got um, Anarchy to his last click. And I was like, ooh, I'd really like Anarchy to like make more bombs because I didn't place them as well as I could have. He stuck to like the far edge of the map where I didn't put them. And I was like, that's not great for me because I don't have a ton of improved elevation. So I kind of put the maps where I didn't want to be anyhow. Uh, but uh, I did. So... Um, he took out those two, well, took out Magneto. I decided, pretty bad I decision, I decided to switch Watcher to his 20 defend click and uh, grab Anarchy. And I was like, yeah, I'll give Anarchy a 20 defend. 20 and defend. so he retaliated yeah. with Dark Phoenix with like three perplexes, had like a 13, only needed a 7. Had way more theme probs than I did, which was zero for me. Uh, no natural prob on the team after getting Anarchy knocked off of it. So uh, wiped those two off in one attack instead of just wiping out like Anarchy. I could have still had Watcher. I don't know what he would have done, but I still could have like had him. Um, yeah. And from there, it was just like kind of like a slow, like everything left on the team after that was harder to kill. So Daredevil put it like the most work in with the... Um, Gosh, I forget about it every time. Ultimate Nullifier. He did put the Nullifier, most work baby. in this game where he like one shot a tempo with it. I said four. I rolled a four. Or actually, no, I rolled a five. So I said four. I rolled a five. 
four damage just bleeps tempo out of existence. Um, I can't remember if I used it again. I feel like I didn't get a chance, but I did like hit a cable. Uh, he definitely ended up scoring Mudman as well because Mudman I kind of tossed out there to try and try and uh, tie some people down. He had good positioning. Uh, TK'd people around with cables really well. Um, it's hard to use plasticity when there's cables that are just yanking people back around. But no, it was it was a good game. It was definitely like the hardest game because I started off just bad with my bomb placement, and I don't think Anarchy was really going to do a whole lot to the team anyhow. You got Jubilee with Invincible on that click. You've got the cables that, even though they're the short dial cables, they've got invulnerability. There's just a bunch of stuff that can kind of tank it on that team, so it's yeah. really hard without like bopping uh, Anarchy around and placing more bombs to deal a ton of damage. And my team just straight up does not deal damage. Outside of Anarchy, it's mostly Daredevil using the ultimate nullifier, which is pretty One. pretty bad. All those big build, numbers, baby. To be honest, yeah, um, yeah. And in play testing, I think I rolled what like three ones back to back against you. It was bad, yeah. In practice, like in actual uh, playing it in like this tournament, I rolled really well with it. Like, there was a few times I could have said six nice. or five, uh, and I would have, like, dealt that much damage. Um, but, yeah, that was the second game, second match. Um, did not go in my favor, but uh, it ended up 150 to 65. I think I – I know I killed Tempo, and then it looks like I killed something 30 points, so probably, like, Cypher. Uh, something like – some of them really sad, apparently. Um, Terrible. Not even yeah. Dark Phoenix. Like Cypher. Oh no, it was Dark Phoenix. Okay, I didn't I think even kill did. Cyber or Cypher. Uh, so yeah, it was Dark Phoenix was the one where I I set off two bombs. One was a dud, so she killed two people, healed twice, but took Mystics from Watcher. I set off two bombs. One was a dud, and then I just picked three with uh, the ultimate nullifier, and rolled like a three or a four, and that's like enough to blipper the one more because she was on her stop click oh, sure. at that point so yeah, yeah. so I, I did have to like power action kill something this team almost never makes attacks it's very strange the team that I was running it's pretty bad uh, last game was extremely close and by extremely close I mean it was it ended up being 90 to 50 or no 90 to 85 so it was 5 point difference um and this was the only person of the day that just straight up went for like the hardest to KO figures on my team. So uh, she KO'd the Joker, the Haha -ha Joker, which is not an easy task, but uh, she was running a Wonder Woman theme team or Amazon theme team. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it was the title Wonder Woman, uh, Cersei, Hippolyta, um, and the Prime Giganta. I think it was just those four. <clears throat> and then some equipments yeah. and stuff. Um, but yeah, I managed to kill the title Wonder Woman, mostly with bombs, because she doesn't have any reducers. And then I managed to kill a single uh, Colin, or not Colin, but uh, Amazonian, uh, like the sideline, the sidekick ones that Hippolyta can bring in. So I managed to kill those two things, and... She managed to kill my haha -ha Joker, which was forty points. Uh, I think Ironheart for twenty five, and then Mudman for another twenty. So that was the eighty five. So yeah, three of like the hardest things to kill on my team. The only thing that was like even like honestly, uh, so man, um, Daredevil was down to like his last six tokens. So another six just straight up kills him. Like any any attack that hits with a six just straight up kills him he's got a 17 so most attacks with the six included will hit and will kill him when he's only got one left so that was really close um watcher and magneto really put in some work tk and anarchy back and forth to drop bombs over and over again i just like rinsed and repeat that tactic it takes three actions to do it but it was worth it every time because oh. three like see out of the four bombs i placed doing that three of them went off uh, and so I almost killed a few characters with that. But uh, no, it was just a really fun game. There's a lot of good back and forth. 
I honestly didn't know what the points were close to, like towards the end there. Oh, but yeah. Uh, yeah, so I I ended two and one <laughs> in the day with two hundred and five points total. I love that. This Hilarious. is not a high scoring team. It's a it's kind of like a win or don't kind of team. If you if you don't win, if you don't beat all your opponents mm. with it and don't like deny yeah. them points, then you just you don't win. Love that. That is that is something I find. Uh, let me check it. Absolutely hilarious. Yes, I love this. Uh, okay, <laughs> so what was my team? What I run? How to do? Blah blah blah. I ran a soldier theme team. I really just wanted to play U.S. agent. I wanted to play like a Walker Cap. I wanted to play Chase Captain America Falcon. So put them all on a team, and I had forty five points left. So. Three Ameridroids on there uh, for an even 300-point team. Uh, very patriotic. Super fun. Uh, one of my favorite teams I've ever built, I guess, played. Uh, it's a, it's and a then the synergy is pretty great, actually. Like That's like the cool part about like the synergy and everything is uh, Falcon. So Falcon can hypersonic up, he can punch somebody, he can bring him back or just move him and spit them back my way. Then we have the full speed charge from John, our U.S. agent. And then John can, of course, charge Flurry, maybe finish him off and get his whole plus one you know, stats, battle fury, steel energy, whatever. So pretty simple. Um, yeah, so like moving up, I could kind of choose what I wanted to do. And another thing is I really wanted U.S. agent to get a ton of uh, a lot of his powers, you know, but that requires friendly characters to die. And he has to have line of fire pretty easy to have line of fire when they're like a bunch of giants so that's where like the ameridroids came in sometimes i would be defensive which sucks because ameridroid has a five speed so putting them in front of my team means they move like two squares out of the starting area to have an ameridroid in front of them which is a big bummer um not gonna lie uh using them as a shield i don't think i ever did that in any of the games but it was it could have been a choice could have been a very slow slow moving choice but it was a choice uh, some games I would just carry them up with the Maradroids if I wanted everybody to be free. But then after the first game, I realized we have a 50-50 willpower with US Agent. We have a leadership with John Walker, and then we also have a willpower with Sam Wilson. So if they have to walk, that's totally fine. Sam can fly up John Walker. US Agent can walk there himself. And then 50-50 willpower on US Agent. And then we have two chances at a 5-6 to get a token off of Sam is pretty solid again so like that's nice and then yeah all those big dudes that's basically that's basically the entire strategy run up punch somebody send them back maybe and then the johns go ahead and take swings and hurt people and then you just kind of slug it out it's definitely a, a team where you can get a lot of good attacks off right away but then the fun part of it is that you get to just slug it out and those are kind of my favorite teams um, so first game I played against the Amazon team. Uh, it was really annoying with all the super senses rolls and then only having Falcon with precision strike. Uh, and then I tried to like spit red wing out there to get the outwit uh, and then he died. So as soon as red wing died, I was like, well, got to choose outwit with us agent because the super senses are killing me. And then Gigana not having any one of that size being full points, uh, was tough. And that was, that was a slog fest, but I got through it. Um, Second game was against Thanos. Yeah, in this kind of casual venue. Um, that was my big fear. I was like, man, what if there's like a Thanos player like at a win a map? And there was, and that's okay. That's cool. Like that's that's what he thinks is like fun and how he likes to play. Uh it wasn't like a crazy optimized Thanos. It was like ego gem, power gem. The idea is like to give Thanos both of them. So spent a lot of time equipping uh q does suck i forget how much i hated yeah. playing q and i will say my sideline was was pure cheese it had a bunch of trouble alerts troublemakers no id cards um f scroll and it did have peggy carter in case sam ever died um and I, I will say this was like the one game where i was like okay run up there i had to whiff all the attacks because i just want to get rid of q and you know call in uh Black vulcan just to get rid of him and it did not would hit one attack and then he wouldn't eat Bob it and whatever and it would never miss and be like well okay well if that attack hit then I should try to hit with the other ones and then I would try to hit with the other ones and they would miss and I'd be like ah shoot so it took a long time to get rid of Q um I overextended Sam right away against Thanos to try and just like hit him and then you know like I said push him back and then let the Johns take care of him 
Uh, but even Sam with a 13 against Thanos' 18 is no match for Q having a loaded one. Uh, so <laughs> yeah. that's just sucks it sucks literally so much i can only get one prob off with sam's prob uh for where where i did overextend quite a, a lot he was still in the starting area the, the entire game was basically played in his starting area i'm a very aggressive player or at least i try to be and i don't like to right step tiptoe around you know it's like now let's, let's get in there let's start making punches i only ended up killing i only ended up killing to call it molecule man and is it uh, so he had watcher it was his last figure and he did give watcher the uh, peggy carter shield which made it very annoying to hit thanos i think in the entire game i only did like four damage to thanos i couldn't capitalize with any other follow-ups uh he made the right call on focusing sam ah uh, sam is so tough dude he's 125 points and for that top dial it's awesome for any other part of his dial it yeah. is no longer awesome that's like that he falls off so hard and then this is reducers and it it's like it's really rough. He is not like a glass cannon, but he cannot take a hit. Like, and I and to be fair, that's probably accurate. Like, Sam himself, once the shield is gone, can't really take a hit. He's just a dude. You know, he's got no super soldier serum. He doesn't have anything helping him out. He's just like a guy. But still, man, some like toughness least throughout. The, like, I would have preferred traded invulnerability than top dial invincible if, if my options were like never have a reducer after the top three clicks it's just it's rough seeing him like go down so so easy after that um but yeah so that was that game i had to take a loss to thanos i was really hoping uh i could win against thanos with this just like kind of random like team because it is still a solid team you know like they got high attack values 13 12 11 and then John can get himself buffed up to a 12 attack if he kills something, you know? Like, there's multiple attacks being made. There's outwits. There's all sorts of... Like, it's still a solid team for being, like, just a hodgepodge. Uh, but, yeah, I really wish I could have beat Thanos. But uh, it didn't happen. That's okay. And the last team was against an X-Men team. It was really cool. Uh, the kid reminded me of kids at my local venue slash Kevin uh, because he didn't have any cards with him. So it was very much a South Dakota venue. Uh-oh, forgot my cards. Uh, type of player, which is to me hilarious. So yeah, didn't have any cards. Um, he had Apocalypse from Rise and Fall, I want to say, and then he had Corvus Rookshire, Corvus Rookshire, and then some other Prime jazz. Omega well. Red. I'm a, yeah, Prime Omega Red. Ken, Ken. and then Speed, Speed Weasel. I know he had Speed Weasel. Oh yeah, Speed, Speed Weasel, Weasel yeah. was there. Uh, so yeah, like this team, it kind of like I got to pull off like my opening the way I wanted it to. I, I ran up hit him with Falcon, pushed him back. Um, I based them with Red Wing, and then I kept Red Wing within line of fire of John, so that way I, I probed, like, two breakaway rolls, so that way this person couldn't sidestep away from Red Wing because I just wanted them to punch a Red Wing while John was looking at him. Uh, and thankfully that did end up happening, which was nice. Uh, but I had to waste two theme probs on breakaway rolls. It felt like it probably wasn't the best thing, but again, this team I just wanted to get a uh, U.S. agent buffed up with a bunch of stuff. So, yeah, it is what it is, and that's okay. And, uh, and yeah, then that game ended, and I ended up getting second place, which was solid, only because, like, so Simi and I both went 2-1, and one, and there was a ton of 2-1s, and ones, uh, obviously, such as a tournament with three rounds and eight players. Uh, but uh, had enough points to get second, 655 points I managed, managed to grab, which is super-duper... Uh, nice. Yeah, that, that Thanos game, getting 55 points I thought was rough. Nope. It it, it wasn't necessarily yeah. a deciding factor because no one Thanos else got ended up, yeah, losing points. to the X-Men team. Uh, yeah, that was zero, always, that's so. always good. It's it's nice to see Thanos lose, I will say. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, bro. Uh, you were a cool guy to talk with and everything, but uh, you played Thanos. Nothing personal. It really isn't. It's uh, the way it be. So, uh, so yeah, that was pretty fun. But no, like the the best part was like Simeon said, man, getting that that, that wet milkshake. No, I'm just kidding. I was talking with everybody there. It was seriously, it was super cool to go to a venue I've never been to before. Uh, people that listen to the show, it's always fun to interact with listeners. Honestly, one of my favorite things to do. It's probably biggest reason I even go to HeroClix events anymore. Uh, not even to play, but to like hang out and interact with listeners is so freaking awesome, and I I just love doing it. So. That is always like a highlight, like a big, yeah. big highlight for me. But yeah, I had never. So 
I had known when playing in Kearney, uh, when I started playing in Kearney, I had known people that would travel from Lincoln to Kearney to do like um, War of Light and stuff like that. I had met a few people that way, but I had never gone to Lincoln for a, like to go to a venue and then playing in Omaha. Like I at one point had three venues in Omaha, so I never had the need to like go to Lincoln or anything like that. But they actually have, you know, three venues. And this one was actually a pretty decent sized venue. I will say the D and D crowd got a little noisy at times. You were. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> other well, than that. Be like, you never want to roll a dice. When you roll a dice, you might get hurt. I'm like, nah, it's fun. I want to roll dice. Talk to the DM. I don't know if you ever heard him say, I didn't, say that. Yeah, I, like, I was yeah, you don't want to roll thing. dice in this game. You just want to talk, all right? Because when you roll dice, you might get hurt. And I was just like, what? What are you talking about? It's you still got to roll That's dice even if you're just talking. There's roll That's to intimidate I was people. Saying, too. Yeah, he said uh, people, if you ever yeah, roll a dice, your I'm going to hurt you. He's like, you fail a stealth check, you're getting hurt. And I'm like, dang, right? I in stealth check, sure, but like, am I going to get hurt? Feel a charisma roll? It's going to stab me because I didn't, I couldn't schmooze him. Oh, you tried to get out Dude. of bed in the morning? That's going to be an agility check. Oh, under a fifth. Rained your ankle, idiot. Like, what? <laughs> Good <laughs> what job, in the Steven. world is happening? You forgot you were tied to the bed again. Yeah, it was it was weird because <laughs> it was like a hobby that store, and then they were su- they were super loud. Um. Personally, I don't know how most people play D&D. I think playing it with a group of friends at a friend's house is the way to go with D&D. But if meeting at the game store is what works for everybody, good for you guys. Super duper loud, though. Um, yeah. Glad you're into it. Glad you're having a good time. But like... <laughs> it was... Lo- no. I really enjoyed the venue, though. Um, it was at no, It a, was awesome. Uh, what was it? Hobby, Hobby Town, Town USA. USA. Yeah. yeah, USA. Which is strange because literally 50 minutes like east in omaha we have two hobby uh, town yeah. usas and neither hosts any hero clicks at all so it is strange yeah, like i had been in this there and store. i asked them about it and they said no we like our rc cars and our gundam models and our 750 dollar legos no they don't have any legos that's I, I, to. Uh, I but uh no it was a cool venue a lot of cool people it's just nice meeting more HeroClix players. That these are people that um, I never would have known and like played the game unless I had gone here. Because I I imagine most of them don't hang out on like Facebook and stuff too often. We did get I can't remember his realm's name now. Casey Superman. Something Casey like that. Superman. I yeah. believe. Yeah. Casey we did get <laughs> a realm's name. So that was like yeah the like the one um, shout out to like a. Uh, an online community kind of thing, but like, no, like it's just cool. Like just like when I go to Bellevue, most of those people don't interact too much online. They do, they do like pop into the Facebook groups and stuff, but they're not like super uh, commenting on like everything everywhere all the time. And I'd never meet those people if I didn't go to those venues. So I'm glad we went. I'll probably be back, especially when the, uh, the 10 of swords set unleashes because uh, I'll drive an hour for two boosters or a booster or whatever. I'll do it. Why not? My car gets decent gas mileage. That's a gallon one way. It's like uh, me. I mean, I usually drove like an hour or so to Sioux Falls. So that was like for my usual venue. So if you already have a venue close and then just like driving only for, you know, every once in a while, not every week. Yeah, that seems like, yeah, totally. Absolutely. Sounds great. Like no gas to be a bit weary, a bit weary of. Yeah. All right, that was the Winamap tournament we played in. Let me check. What are we at right now for time on the old on the old Schmodcast here? We're about an hour and a half in. Simeon, yeah, do we want to do a little a little special? We want to we want to wrap this up with some questions. <sighs> do a a very quick, a very quick, quick because it is episode okay. four twenty. Nothing to do it's with that number at all. But we get a little uh, thread dead uh, redemption. Friend, I just wanted to play. Now, firstly, we ain't friends. Don't make no mistake on that subject. Now, secondly, he can't hardly see, let alone reason. Now, reasoning ain't never been one of my strong points, neither. But see, and I do just fine. This thread, we <laughs> the caveat is this is one of the highest threads we've seen. Right? Yeah, yeah. Specifically, yeah. this thread is 
off its rocker. This is on some uh, some high octane. I don't know. I can't think of all the the euphemisms right now, but uh, you know what we mean. This is this is some big brain thinking stuff. Okay. Tell me about some of these big brains we got. And this is this is HC Realms thread, uh, yeah, of course. The, HC Realms brains in here and clicks. Quick, Realms. quick rundown. No this is a. I'm not going to go into details too much. I will say Slade Wilson started this thread. So if he wants to contact me and uh, yell at me because I'm wrong, then that's fine. Uh, but it is. We need to talk about Blades Claws Fangs. This is more out of curiosity than anything else. So put away the pitchforks and torches, as I'm not advocating for a change. I'm merely attempting to hear other opinions on this thought. Oh, my pitchfork is filled, and my torch is burning bright, if you know what I mean. Uh, Blades Claws Fangs is arguably one of the most devastating powers in the game. I just no. In Especially when combined with other powers like Flurry it's and Exploit. Fangs. Well, I think Flurry and Exploit, when combined, are just a good combo. You combine that with Precision Strike, with Close Combat or Expert, with uh, Quake, like anything that's a good combo yeah. uh, six damage dealt by a knife slash sword or teeth has always seemed too high to me sure you can end up rolling low but the worst result you will see is a negative one to your damage value it's like they built the power strictly for with characters that wield bladed weapons that are far beyond the average metal like wolverine's claws i will say wolverine's claws should usually do like a five six in most situations if he hits you with them they are the sharpest, like, one of the sharpest things in that universe. Yes, I know it's a game, and it's not always accurate in its approach, but I have a hard time believing a ninja with a sword or a thug with a knife is any threat to an invulnerable types like the Thing or Superman. Anyways, just curious what you all think. Peace. I don't want to rag on it too hard, but there are some bad, bad uh, hot takes throughout the thread. I will say, with Blades, uh, I always looked at it as, like, a luck of the strike. So... Sure, you might swing and hit Superman, like, right in the chest, and he just, you know, like, impervious, blah, blah, blah. Or you might hit him in, at just the right angle, and, like, for whatever reason, the blade splits the atoms. It's something something massive like that. And I, if we're going to talk about, like, people being able to hurt the thing and Superman, most people just shouldn't be look. able to in Heroclix anyhow. So that's already yeah. been out the window for a while. Like, look at it this way. Like, M. Wilson can run up to Superman with a 13 attack for 6 damage and punch him for 4. M. Wilson would break his fist on Superman's face. Yeah. Like, this isn't, you The know, Punisher's like, got, on. like, a 4 damage explosion right, thing. Yeah. You think the Superman's Punisher never tanked an explosion before? Like, is he packing kryptonite bombs in his backpack like no same with the thing the thing's made out of rock i get it blades don't work on rock like i mean right. same with thor like most like blades wouldn't work on thor except gore the god butchers necro sword spoilers for a movie that hasn't come out yet but no like if we if we always like keep things in the like light of like well a sword shouldn't like neither should a bullet a bullet wouldn't hurt the thing or superman but like we have people with penetrating psychic blast that can blast right through impervious you know, we have people with uh, exploit weakness. The fact that this right. this thread is calling out Blades, Claws, Fangs explicitly, but yeah. uh, a lot of the comments go on to just, like, bad combos or combos that they don't like. Blades is fine. Flurry is fine. Exploit is fine. Flurry Blades is fine. Flurry Exploit is questionable. Blades Exploit is fine. Flurry Blades Exploit is not fine at all. Like, that's good old Hester there. Oh, no. Yeah. But, yeah, it's just, like, comboing powers. I think it's good for the game i think they explicitly combo powers so that it's more fun so that you can like find these characters or like use these equipments or whatever and i really don't think blades is the problem at oh, worst it's, it's a negative so one weird. but if i have like a four or a three then like at worst i i blades you for two and you've got invul and it just does nothing right so it's not just at worst it's a negative one like sure if i've got a six damage then at worst it's uh, five, and that's just never not like never not too bad, you know, whatever. But yeah, there is a whole like list of like times when I don't want a blades where I'm like not going to risk it. And then there's a lot of characters with like a printed two damage, and I want them to blades or I need them to blades because of invulnerability, impervious, whatever. And the times when I hit a six against somebody that's got impervious and like a really long dial it makes me feel really cool, like it makes me really happy that this like two damage character finally got through those like invincible clicks you know 
um, finally dealt like four damage. And one of our Thursday throwdowns, Calder crit hits me and rolls uh, a six yes. on blades. And he was unbelievably happy to, to have done that. I don't remember what we were playing or what episode it was. I don't even but know either. Yeah, it's, it's somewhere in there. you got to watch all 55 of them to find it. But, uh, yeah. And you know will... what? It's worth it. It's, <laughs> it's worth it's it worth to it. watch every Thursday through because it's a freaking great series. But that's uh, enough yeah, for no, rolling. No, but Rolling Blades is, I think it's number one. He says it's one of the most, what is it, overpowered? Devastating. Devastating powers in the game. Blades Claws. On its own, no. Dice game. You're rolling dice. Yeah. That's just ridiculous. I mean, Slade here, whatever. He just, it's, a, it's a cold take. It's a bad hot take. Which is just a darn shame. The highest yeah. threads I've ever seen. I don't know what he was doing. Maybe he was celebrating his own episode 420 when he wrote this thread. But yeah. Yeah. It's just all I gotta say. The combination of like powers can be good. Because you could combo. Blade, so here's bro. my. my argument against blades plus flurry and exploit being really broken or really good you can flurry exploit close combat expert and that's most of the time better than a blades roll like there's probably like a 50 50 chance that that's better than a blades roll and actually it's better because you'll do like four or five damage twice rather than like four damage once and then three damage the other time or whatever but yeah i i just I thought it was too funny to like pass up that uh, good old Blades Claws Fangs, something that, in my opinion, the competitive players never reach to as like an overpowered power. Gotta have Blades on my team. Yeah. Uh, getting called out as too strong. Too strong. You know what's really strong? The knockback that super strength gives you. I say we just strong, get rid dude. of that. Knockback? Yeah. Super strength? That's nuts. Super strength should only Same, let you dude. pick up a heavy object. And that heavy object should not do any additional damage. And that's it. End of story. Stop making these broken powers, whiz kids. You know, a fun thing that I did with Ironheart, I had uh, Earthbound neutralized and I could still carry people because it takes away improved movement, but it doesn't take away the passenger ability that I... flight grants you. It used to take away uh, flight, but now I, mean... I can still carry. So I was like, yeah, Earthbound's too strong, WizKids. Far too strong. Incredibly far too strong. Plus, I just there's no improved movement through hindering, so I also don't stop through hindering or water. Ooh. So, or, honestly, Earthbound, too strong, WizKids. Like, hot take, but not hot take. Earthbound, too strong. Or could we say too weak for what it's supposed to do? Ah. It's intended is to make you weaker, and it's... Yeah. Not as weak as it should be. Be stronger in making you weaker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. I've all, I've, yeah. It's Earth correct. Uh, When this character would take an action, they take two instead. Like, bam. Super simple fix. Ooh, I like that. Uh, Really gross. Makes characters with it feel like really bad for having it. More thematic. Don't worry about, like, the movement stuff. Just when this character takes an action, they take two actions instead. Boom. Uh, that's all for that thread. We didn't want to spend too much time on it because we've also got some questions. We, of course, are just going to rate this thread. Uh, let's see. We could do one out of five, but I think instead we'll do four out of 20 just because it happens to be episode 420. Right. Got some questions. There are dozens of us. Dozens! All right. Uh, really quickly doing some questions from Ole. Welcome, Rush. Uh, these questions would take a really, really, really long time, so instead we're going to split them up. He says, pick one Heroclix figure to represent each power and ability and why you pick that figure. I don't know if we'll go into the why so much, but we will run through. So we're going to do just speed powers today. This is like 12 figures, and we're going to do attack next week. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I did it in the order they appeared on the pack. I don't know what, what order Simeon did it in, just but uh, really quickly. How I remembered them, them. yeah. Sounds good. Uh, so my flurry pick was TMNT 032 Chase Raphael. Uh, he has flurry and he deals penetrating combat attack. And, uh, piece I kind of a piece that first came to mind when I think of the power is kind of what I went with. Okay. I went with the XXS Super Wolverine because uh, his Berserker Barrage or whatever you want to call it. Um, 
like it always felt more like Battle Fury kind of like in in name it felt like Battle Fury, but as we were told this weekend, uh, Battle Fury is when you're so mad that you make a second attack. So isn't it kind of like Flurry <laughs> anyhow? <Yes. laughs> uh, oh my uh, gosh! Um, for Leap Climb, I chose the gosh, what is he even the Batrock Zidipe from Captain America 2011, which is when he climb you can make a close combat attack and it's the guy who i think of when i think of a leap climb all right i went with the superior uh not superior uh spider-man venom absolute carnage peter parker because he not only has leap climb but like as far as characters with improved movement go uh spider-man slash peter parker are almost always there so yeah he's always leaping and climbing it's this whole thing Ooh. Next up is Phasing Teleport. Uh, the first one that came to mind was Mobius and Mobius for not only having oh. Phasing Teleport, but helping other folks that can phase and or teleport. First thing that came to my mind was Darkseid with Boom, Tumor, Boom Tube Arrival. Um, so most characters with the Boom Tube from that set can use it once per game. He just gets to use it every turn if he wants to. Uh, speed value is 12 when he uses it, and he can remove an action token after he does. So it's a really good version of phasing teleport, but also if anyone should be able to phasing teleport, it's the guy with all the boom tubes. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, next up is Earthbound Neutralized, and of course there's no character that makes Earthbound Neutralized more than Superman. Uh, I went with the JL060 <laughs> Superman. What absolute loser big old dumb stuck on the rock guy yeah um, i went with the age of ultron jewel so she has two starting lines and one of them is the special uh damage power at 25 points where she's got earthbound uh willpower and not a hero just a detective now so this is of course jessica jones so this is when she stops being jewel this like specific point in her dial um so She's not depowered, but she doesn't fly, so it's kind of like she's kind of depowered. Technically, Jessica Jones is still like really strong and tough and stuff, but uh, this one specifically is she's just pretending to be like a detective now. So, um, yeah, that's why I picked that one. Nice. Next up is Charge. I went with Glass Shatter, Stone Cold Steve Austin with his vehicular assault. <laughs> Um, forcible entry is the name of that uh, WWE track um, I think it's by I can't remember the name of the band now it's like a band that I actually listened to back in the day uh, for charge I went with the AVPI 043 rare Captain America so it's Ooh. funny because he has charge running shot and sidestep so three speed powers right. but this is one that I always thought was just uh, like sculpt alone, just like really charging into the fray. He's blocking the bullets. Um, you know, he can choose combat ec or combat yeah. reflexes or ESD. So like, it was just like I don't know. Cap's always like been like the like lead the charge kind of dude. So it makes sense. Okay. Okay. He's got nice. first through the door, last to leave. I don't know. I like that. I do like that. Uh, next up is Mind Control. I chose probably the most notable Mind Control piece in the world. Uh, that is from Lone Ranger 004, <laughs> Red Harrington. <laughs> ah, good old uh, Red Harrington. You know if you played six of those, you might win just because of all the per perplex. Perplex, I bet. It's kind of a jerk move if you did that. Yeah, you'd be a real jerk playing that many Red <laughs> Harrington. Uh, most beautiful sculpt in the game. Um, oh, so good. For mind control, I went the with the XXS Professor X rare. Uh, he's, of course, the one that can use mind control as a range action. He targets all opposing characters within range, regardless of the line of fire. Hit targets can't make attacks during this action. So not technically the best version of mind control. He can use mind control as free, or not as free. He can use mind control as normal, because he does have just printed mind control with eight range two lightning bolts uh but when he uses it as a range action he can target opposing character all opposing characters if he chooses to and that always seemed really cool just taking over your entire opponent's force like an 18 square or not 18 jeez, an eight 18 square reach square? eight, okay, eight square reach in like all all directions 
always seemed really cool to me. I always liked this guy for just really disrupting. Um, he's also one of the few psychics that I know can mind control and drop a tank through walls because that's what I used him for in 2018 Hero Clicks. Dropping a, oh, a little yeah. tank with thoughts that turns into a giant tank and hurts people. Uh, beautiful. I love it. <laughs> tank. Thoughts. I'm thinking about it real hard. Uh, all right. Next up is plasticity. Uh, had to give it to my boy Krampus or Krumpus, depending on what you want to call him. But uh, uh, full yes. dial of plasticity, and he is just a dude uh, locks you down and puts you in his in sack because you've yeah. been a bad, bad the kid this children year. hanging out in his bag. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, Krumpus, Krampus. Let's see for plasticity. Let me double check that I got this one right. Um, there we are. Um, no, I did not. So I just went with a uh, mud man because he has traded plasticity and he's mud. So it's like it makes sense. He's like he's a gooey, sticky monster dude. Uh, he's not very fast, but he's just like real sticky. Uh, tar pit from the the Flash set would also be like a fine choice. But uh, yeah, any kind of like just goo monster i always think of being yep. plasticity being like a goo monster thing he's uh he's, he's very gooey and I'm, I'm cool down next is force blast i go my boy hardball from the captain america set when i think force blast i think old hardball here i don't know a dang thing about hardball um but he's got a big old red dodgeball glued to his hand got force yeah. blast for the Four clicks of his five click life. You know how many of those I oh. used to like for like swap full or not swap, uh for sculpt like fodder. Those like for, red bulls. What? I, cut, I chopped what a lot of them up. I don't know. I don't remember ball anymore. Ball. You can paint you know balls any kind of color though. You have green balls, red balls, blue balls, it doesn't matter. Any kind of ball. That <laughs> you just color for force blast, nope. I picked Frogman. Nope. Uh, you go. Thank you. Because he does like the whole thing where uh, oh, free action knock himself back four squares after yeah. actions resolve. If this knockback path was stopped by a character, Frogman knocks that character back two squares. Does he even have Force Blast now that I'm thinking about it? I don't think he oh, does. He um, back. That's still the character I thought of, though, so I'm going to keep it. Even though he's Fair got enough. a full dial of Leap Climb, so he probably would have been a better choice for that. I'm still going to say oh. Force Blast because it made our decision. he's all about knockback, yeah. And he's yeah. goofy. Gosh, he is goofy. Are you excited for him to be in She-Hulk? Uh, yes. Yes, I am. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Even though uh, I have not seen the trailer yet. Oh, sorry. Spoilers to the trailer. We see 0.2 seconds of Frogman. Uh, for Sidestep, I I was thinking like, man, Sidestep is like move two squares of people have it who who am i really thinking like sidestep and probably maybe some people or maybe would lean toward like the shredder chases no 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 um, sure boy soldier that is someone not only does he himself have sidestep he makes a ton of pogs that also all have sidestep yeah and it's kind of important to get your rifle yeah. formation rally get the, and get yeah, the, the movement uh because they have zero speed so they can only move by a sidestep because they also can't be placed so that is i will fun. say Toy soldiers and casual have messed me up more than once because they get uh, every time they hit, they add one to the action total or something like that. So, uh, yes, because you keep hitting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They like it's it can be pretty bad if you Stop, are, like yeah. if you get caught in like the crossfire, uh, literally. Um, for sidestep, I went with you know she got sidestep top dial and then she goes to force blast. Um, Better Force Blaster than Frogman, I guess. Dr. Claire Finn, because she spits out the Yafit oh. Pog that gives everyone for their sidestep. Oh, side uh, uh, yeah, yeah, that's pretty legit, then. She's got yeah, sidestep herself, but yeah, it's the most notable is, like, the, the person that creates the bystander that gives everybody else sidestep for me. Okay. Legit. Legit. Uh, next up, after sidestep, we have hypersonic speed. I wanted to choose someone that wasn't, like, maybe... Like, this was, like, the first person I could think of. And it was the uh, Captain America and the Avengers 054 Captain Marvel uh, with her whole hypersonic speed, oh, yeah. deal of penetrating damage, all that jazz. Like, I was like, Chewy. yeah. Yeah. That's a hypersonic girl right there. I went with uh, Casey Flash 
Specifically the one from the Flash set, but, I mean, technically either of them. They both, I think, have hypersonic. Um, The KC from the Flash set has a special one uh, with its, like, speed token stuff. But all of the Flashes from that Flash set were phenomenal. The speed tokens were really cool. Their stats were really cool. Um, Someone please play this guy against me and hit my dupe until he gets to a stop click so I can have a 17 attack because that would be just really cool very cool very very cool uh next up is stealth um, i think a lot of people might think batman when they think stealth but i think of you know, people have seen batman people have actually seen batman like kind of a lot you know who no one has ever seen abominable snowman Simeon. okay uh, and he also has traded john cena and i was gonna oh, turn no, off the audacity and just turn off discord and leave yeah, no more podcasts. No, 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 no. No, this was an abominable snowman has traded stealth. The trait being called just a legend? Question mark. So I, I love that flavor. I like that idea. So uh, yeah, that's my stealth pick. Okay. My first thought for stealth was uh, somebody that uh, exemplifies stealth in their entire outfit. And that would be, uh, I think his name is um, Batman? No, it is... Stealth Suit Punisher from the Civil War Super. Organized no. Play Kit. No. Uh, quite literally, electronic suction cups, infiltration suit dampeners, downloading the schematics and access codes. Uh, so he's got stealth, but then non-adjacent oh. opposing characters can't use improved targeting ability to target Punisher. Uh, so he had better than stealth stealth. is pretty good. And, and you know... In his mocap suit. Think- his terrible like motion capture suit look at yeah, that dude it's got the little suction on it or something weird like that um yeah like the first figure that had like or that came to mind for stealth that i know doesn't have it was like exuther subterfuge and i'm like yeah but he doesn't have it. oh um, yeah uh, another one would be the age of ultron black panther oh yeah think has classic uh, stealth right but as the it's uh, the like lines of fire are blocked for reasons. Um, yeah. Cloaking tech. Oh, stealth toughness. When it isn't your it turn, is. lines oh, of fire okay. to him are blocked if he's adjacent to blocking. So he does have stealth. That's another really good one, though, with just a stupid good sculpt. Oh, it's so awesome. Man, if they could. I don't know if they still have access to like those old molds from like back then, but. If they could reuse that oh, sculpt like, and like the Black Lantern Zoom sculpt, boards. I always really liked those kind of things. The ones where it's like um, it like yeah. shows movement through the sculpt kind of thing. Uh oh, for sure. Awesome. Next up, we have our last. We have running shots. To me, uh, exemplified running shot the most was the Hammer of Thor zero forty Captain America. Ah, Full deflection running shot and through all sorts of fun stuff so i will say this while looking through captain america's because like that was the first thing i thought of for charge most of them actually start with a running shot big shot yeah, yeah. so it actually is Even, more of like uh, a running shot like character earth x cap <clears throat> that i always think is yeah. so close based Isn't that starts with He's running a, shot yeah big shot yeah um i went with the adw 053 and now that i think about it i picked like a couple of adw characters didn't i uh, maybe not. ADW053, Iron Man. So he is the all my different armors merged into one. Uh, you can give him a free action, choose any two standard powers except defense powers. So you could have like precision strike and pulse wave and do like fun stuff or uh, penetrating psychic blast and energy explosion with two lightning bolts. He's just a really good ranged combat piece, but I always think of Iron Man as... Like, caps the charge in, and Iron Man's, like, the run-and-shoot-in sure. kind of dude. I mean, I guess, right like, off. they use running shot to show Cap throwing his shield, whereas I more right. think of, like, Cap, time, like, yeah. run and bash somebody instead of throw it, but... Um, a charging star, not so much a... Yeah. It is throw shield move, but... Yeah. All right. Uh, that's Malcolm's questions. We asked our Discord for some special, you know, for no specific reason. We're recording episode 420 tonight. Give us some questions. Uh, Mr. Halverson asks, what real-world celebrities would you like to see clicked? Why? As themselves a celebrity? Uh, Simeon? Uh, Which real-world celebrity? Gilbert Godfrey. 
like in the same way that like just granted everyone to do terrible gilbert godfrey impression every time they play him yeah 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 that's that's what clicks is about is terrible impressions merry christmas charlie i don't know i can't even that was already terrible i'm not going to subject anyone to it ever again uh i guess mine's on the same front but i thought of arnold schwarzenegger which i guess also oh, yeah. gives people the ability to do a terrible arnold schwarzenegger nice to impression. Meet you. yeah yeah it, all the all of them and i uh, can play him with mr freeze which the entire reason I want him to be looks made. Looks like your Sub Zero is now playing Zero. Zero, Ugh, bad. Don't. Cr- I know there is a Thursday Throwdown where one of us is playing a Mister Freeze, and that's basically what we're doing the entire time. Yeah. Um. <laughs> that is next true. up. Watch all fifty four. What is your? Tell us which one it was. Yeah. Gosh, you're gonna have to. Uh, Luke. Luke. Luke asks, "What is your personal favorite, oh, oh, Mary okay. Jane, and why?" The ghost of Luke, 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 Luke. Right. Because he was missing in action for a long, long time. Uh, Personal favorite Mary Jane, because I've just never really ran um, a Mary Jane outside of... um, Let's see. Yeah. Because I I, really like the only Mary Jane I've ever played enough of is the Spider-Man and Venom Absolute Carnage one. Uh, paparazzi making one i definitely played the superior foes one a few times 25 point perplex but uh, i haven't played the war of realms never played the web of spider-man one whatever she does and there's bystanders hey, that really i don't know don't do anything. yeah i'll uh if we can choose a marvella a different Mary Jane watson oh, sure. I, I real would name marvella. Mary Jane. Uh, probably yeah if not like kind of like what you said the only other Mary Jane i've ever played was the uh, the common <laughs> I, I haven't even played the rare from War of the Realms yet. Yeah. I really same. wanted to, I guess. Or felt the want. Why is it that that one's not called Mary Jane Watson? It's uh, literally Mary Jane Watson I mean, Parker. Oh, my, yeah, my bad. One where she's the Mary Nation Parker. Yeah. Okay. Had to keep the Watson Park. She is she is an actress. I like that the first two Mary Janes ever made are the uh, the wife of Peter Parker. That's pretty cool. That's nice. And then it was nope downhill from there. Sorry, yeah. Petey boy. You five sold your marriage for your year five on. point bystander with the wild card. Wild card could is copy okay? all sorts of fun stuff. That's got to be okay. I don't know what it does, it's but it's got to be okay. Be fine. Uh, next question is, Bill, we have a Green Lantern team ability with more Lanterns coming in a DC set. What would you like to see as TAs for the other cores? I'm pretty sure we've gotten this question four or five times, and I know we've answered on the podcast before, where we like go into yeah, what we want like, every other Lantern core to be able to do. So we'll say, really quickly, just to choose one of them, uh, Red Lanterns should just have the ability that is Masters of Evil, which they just dogpile you on a close attack. I think solid for okay. Red Lanterns, not or that could the, also be yellow. Thing. Okay. Uh, I mean, yeah, they already get that in a lot of traits and stuff. I think um, uh, Yellow Lantern should, um, instead of like negative perplex, they should have like an aura of uh, fear. So within like x squares starting like i don't know whatever um for every square closer you get to them you get another stat reduced by one so like when you're uh, like and whoever i don't know opposing character gets to pick but uh like if you're within four squares it's one when you're in within three squares it's two within two squares it's three and then when you're adjacent you have four stats that are minus one that'd be kind of cool more fearful as close you get. I can dig it. I can dig something. I'm trying to think of like back to like the the kind of shared traits that they had, and Yellow Lantern was always negative perplex, and that was it. It was like perplex, but only to reduce combat values. Yeah. Next up, we have the Senate. Are you a big fan of the Grim Creeper? <laughs> I mean Reaper. Um, comment. Uh, Grim Creeper is the spicy Momo sauce that they sell at the Ooh. Momo stand. So. I am a big fan of Grim Creeper, actually, but I don't fear the Reaper. That's yeah. ah, good. Uh, Ian asks, "What character would you like to see as the next three by six colossal?" Hmm. 
That's a really good question. Uh, Earth X Iron Man, where is Stark Tower? The Stark Tower that, suit, yeah. Stark Tower suit. That is that would be cool. baller. Um, and also the first thing that came to mind. That's a, yeah, that's a baller. wild like out in left field. I was just yeah. going to say something that was already made, like the Spectre, uh, oh, no, no. Doctor Manhattan. If we're going with like stuff that hasn't been made. I still think they really need to do Barbados justice and do like a oh, full sure. set of like colossal, like dark metal, like stuff. You know what else would be solid uh, to remake Thor's chariot, but you make it the goat boat as seen in the Thor love and thunder trailer where it's his goats, but they're, they're pulling the, uh, the boat with them. And so make Thor's goat boat as a three by six, make it needlessly huge. Yeah. King sauce asks, are there comic book characters notorious for, I don't know why he says this, uh, 420 blazing it? Uh, I don't know. I think Johnny Blaze will be the most notorious yeah. blazing it type person. I would say Johnny Blaze. Um, probably Man Thing or uh, Swamp Thing. Yeah. I mean, maybe Swamp, Swamp thing. thing to a less extent, but Man Thing for sure. Well, yeah, I'd say Man Thing is he like burns whatever he touches, right? Whatever knows fear, oh, I'll yeah, feel yeah. the burning touch of Man Thing. Right? So it's kind of works, blazes it. Yeah, he's like one um, of those uh, real paranoid kind of guys. Right. Paranoid. Man Thing's super paranoid. Uh, Zone Bill asks Will the Mystery Gang feature any 420 references? I don't know. Maybe. Oh. Maybe. Probably not. No, they probably won't. <laughs> I mean, it's funny they, they've got to have like a like endless appetite trait that Scooby and oh, uh, Shaggy yeah, have for us. That's like, more so a, a munchies. I mean, a side effect of oh yes, of four hundred and twenty oh, episodes. Yes. Four hundred twenty episodes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, correct, correct, correct. Do we have more episodes oh. than Scooby Gang? Oh gosh, there's no way. They've been on TV in one way, shape, or form since like the sixties. There's no way they don't have over four hundred and twenty episodes. Of- all combined, hmm. right? there's I feel like no a lot way. of it's been like syndicated though. I wonder. I mean, I I, I honestly don't know. List of Scooby Doo episodes. Yeah. That's oh, man, there's no it, way. It looks it's like not. a lot. It looks like a lot to be honest. Uh, there's no way. There's we'll say no it's way. It's a lot harder yeah. to make these episodes than it is for them to make those ones though. Uh, Hanna Barbera has it easy when it comes to animation. Is it? Where it's you at. think you want to animate hard? animate one episode of the podcast let's do one of those oh goofy gosh. little animated episodes you know how like people run it where two take years like, later and it would be yeah, exactly it would take forever uh, looking like an episode of south park like real bad yeah. that's Just about as best as we our heads it. moving around and then like <laughs> occasionally popping open to like say things all right warburg uh this is, this is a big thing he's doing a 300 point build scenario rescue the hostage wolverine and captain america who are they bringing with them who are they rescuing uh, all right, quick, quick super fast build. Captain America is going to rescue. Wow, HC Realms is doing this annoying thing. Let me know if you have it, listener. It happened three times this episode so far. Or if I type too fast, it puts in all the letters backwards instead of I was typing Captain America, and it was. That's the thing about me. Um, I never type too fast. Yes, so I guess I'm. It's a thing. Yes, I'm just too fast. You, I you never type not. too fast. Or not. Yeah, uh, but Captain America would, of course, take Falcon, probably the Prime Falcon, from BPI to Down on Actions. And then Sharon Carter, of course, and then probably a version of the Winter Soldier. Who would probably be rescuing... This Cap rescue a lot. Not really rescue a one person, like Batman rescuing Robin. No. Um, he'd be rescuing Kobik. That's a, that's that's who they rescued one time. They rescued Kobik, so yeah, we'll go with that. Okay, that'd be the team. All right, yeah, like that. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna go with. Okay, yeah, I got the team. Uh, so Wolverine. Uh, it's gonna be specifically the X Men Rise and Fall Legacy Wolverine, which is the okay. uh, X Men and the or Wolverine and the X Men zero zero one Wolverine. Yeah. Um, going to be teaming up with Alpha Flight, so the Vindicator uh, at 100 points, the new Ellie, by new, I mean 2016 Ellie, uh, the Sasquatch from XDPS, the 2x2, two two, and Puck from the Invincible Iron Man for 50 oh, points each. So it's going to be Wolverine, 
a little bit of the Alpha Flight, and they're going to be rescuing uh, Luke, who was stranded in the Canadian wilderness and was responding <laughs> to messages for uh, four funny. weeks or something. like. I don't know. It was a while. It was a while, Luke. It was a while. I was it was a hot helicopters. They were drones, but they're still helicopters. Yeah, they kept basically. dying before they got to the border. Yeah, they just don't have uh, like, like uh, the no, battery that's just, light. That's just a solid Canadian team uh, saving a solid Canadian person. <laughs> solid Canadian dude. Uh, oh gosh. Um. Okay. Next question. Uh, well, Lucas just says blaze it. I don't know what that possibly mean. That is. Uh, uh, and then, yeah, that's a question for Phoenix Nest. And the answer is yeah. no. No, you do not. Uh, Reed then asks, in the upcoming DC set, so that's the Batman team-up set, what character would you like to see would probably not make... Um, With it being a Lantern set, my first choice is Guy Gardner. Specifically, I really want to see the Yellow Lantern Guy Gardner where he and Lobo together uh, steal the Yellow Lantern ring from Sinestro. And the ring, because Guy doesn't have a battery, charges off every time he's fight it gets like more charged like the more he gets hurt and the more he gets hit um the ring gets actually more charged and more powerful that was from guys solo run in the 90s so he's got like no lantern costume but he's got like a jacket that's got a g on it and he's got cowboy boots and blue jeans on and it's a pretty dope look for guy gardner and i've always wanted a, a yellow lantern guy like that um probably not gonna be made but i'd love to see him there simeon who do you think uh... Probably won't get made, but someone you want real badly. Oh, man. I'm going to say Batman probably teamed up with, like, Jughead at one point. Oh, man. Because I know there was an Archie-DC crossover, so um, either, like, Archie or Jughead or the other one. Uh, But, yeah, team up with uh, with one of the, the bunker people, the bunker children that are stuck in the 50s. Oh, they're a fun group. Not that, not that Archie. Uh, definitely not that Archie. <laughs> definitely not that Archie. Um, is that not Archie that Bunker? Is... No. What, which Archie am I talking about? What's his uh, name? The is redheaded that... one. Yeah, is that um, not Riverdale? Archie? <laughs> yeah. No, Archie Bunker's like an old TV show dad. Oh. <laughs> uh, I can't even well, think of what his last name is right now. Uh. Archie Archibald Bunker, a fictional character from the 1970s. Archie Andrews. American. Archie Andrews. AA. Archie All in Andrews. The family. Uh, well, team up with that guy too. Sure. Why not? Gosh. Uh, why why not? He looks like he uh, was probably great. That's not. Have you seen the show? Uh, All in the I family? I, no. I try okay. not to watch shows made in the 70s. I'll, I'll, to be honest. I'll tell you later and why we probably shouldn't say we think. Archie bunkers. Um, anyway, <laughs> just just Archie, the guy from the, the redhead from the comics with yep, the Archie Andrews. Yeah, Andrews. Yep. yep, is that his name? Yep, it's Andrews. <laughs> okay. I think about it, but I got it. I used to own a ton of Archie comics. Yep, uh, that is all of the question. If you guys wanted to send us a question, like how a lot of our Patreon members did on Discord, you can join our Patreon for as little as a dollar a month. Uh, I'll probably be posting something. Super, super soon about what all is going to be given away on the Patreon. There's going to be a lot of cool stuff given away this month. A lot of Disney Plus stuff. I know an entire Kerr and his Rare Primes is going to be given away, so that's that's pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, and if you want to send us questions like Malcolm did, you can just do so by sending them over to us on Facebook.com. You can message us, dial H4, clicks on Facebook, dial H4, that's the number 4, on Twitter if you want to send us a message on Twitter. And then if you want to send us an email at dialhforheroclicks at gmail.com, you can ask questions that way. Make sure to check out our YouTube channel. We went live this last week playing some Bequest, which is a WizKids board game, a classic, classic. dividing dividing card game. Dividing um, Classic loot dividing card game. It's actually super fun, uh, yeah. and it can be really fast-paced once you get hold of it, and it's really cool. So, um Watch it's out actually, for yeah, it's a game. I didn't know if I would like what? it going into it, but after playing it, it's going to be a game that like I take over to other people's houses and force them to play. It's so simple to like once you get the grasp of it, it just you can burn through a bunch of rounds back and forth, and uh, I think it gets better with the more people that you play with. So, and if you want Bequest, well, you know where I picked it up at 
That's right, Calder. I picked it up at CoolStuffInc.com. You didn't know that, did you, you fool? Um, Not. Yeah, they got board games. They got family games, children games, strategy games. Uh, no, nothing lists uh, classic loot dividing games, but uh, it's in there. It's definitely in there. Uh, they've got it's... Hero Clicks, though. That's that's what we're here for. That's why they sponsor us. Uh, they've got Hero Clicks, the latest, the greatest sealed singles. Bequest is thirty seven forty nine right now. They have five. Oh, it's pretty good price. Yeah, um, and of course you can get five percent off by using code Dial Five when you buy. And every hundred dollars that you spend, you get free shipping. So check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Like always, betrayals. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks. No, are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like the hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Over How they, six uh, people humor? think I am funny. It's the hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which absolute fools it's not witcher nonsense i'm gonna make hero clicks like that forever are you <laughs> kidding me hey google attack someone let's attack Simeon because he's a jerk